在身上。深深。Welcome to the Action Shelf, the podcast celebrates the glory of B action movies. I'm John Campbell, and I'm Michael Lisman. Oh, Lisman, boy, you know, every once in a while we get one of these months that's just a pleasure, and we kind of yeah. know that when we when we're going in when we do a month about JCVD. So, yes, right, yeah, Kickboxer was great. Cyborg, as you remember, was probably the greatest movie ever made if i had to if i <laughs> the had to finest judge what we saw last week. film uh, ever constructed yeah. uh I, I i didn't think albert pion could do it but boy <laughs> he really knocked it out of the park the orson one. wells <laughs> of post-apocalyptic uh, adventure movies uh uh-huh, yeah but, so this week brings us to 1990s lionheart and uh-huh. our yeah. month of guests continues with another one of our favorites elliot lewis is back with us Yes, and uh, I'm the only guest that matters this month because I was born on the same day as Jean-Claude Van Damme. Oh, Jean-Claude so. Van Damme. Oh, yeah, that's why we had to have you on for one of these. Exactly. And I think, now we haven't finished the month, obviously, but this is mm. going to be tough to beat. We have two more after I, this. Is yeah, gonna... I was looking up uh, information on this, and mm. a lot of people say this is one of his better films. This is generally like, in the discussion the when people talk about that JCVD movie. This is certainly like in that pool of films for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And it, Despite it, being such a low budget film, you know. Yeah, because this is this is kind of he's right on the cusp of, of getting into like the blockbuster stuff he'll be doing, mm-hmm. which is certainly you know very much the era I grew up in when he's doing Time Cop and stuff like that. Um, right, but this because this is a uh, independently produced but distributed by Universal movie. Oh, okay, gotcha. So it, it did get it did eventually get picked up by a studio. But uh, speaking of, since it is a lower budget, uh, do you want to take your best guess as to how much this movie did cost? Ooh, okay, yeah. Um, nineteen ninety. It looks really cheap. There's not really anybody in this movie who would you know bump up the price tag too much come on uh, brian john or brian thompson's in this movie <laughs> brian thompson is in this that's true uh he is a, a regular on, oh we've seen it, oh, it, 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 it not a couple months go by that we don't see this guy yeah yes uh and every time it's like hey it's the guy from the x-files um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. he is no matter what he does he will always be the alien bounty under from the x-files he did a great job um, he's wonderful yeah, I don't know, Elliot. What What do you think? Uh, normally, I'm the one guessing, but uh, you know, uh, do you have any idea? I'm I'm guessing around like the two two million dollar two million range. Yeah, okay. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I mean, you got JCVD. Yeah. There's a lot of fight choreography. There is. There's, that's true. but. Probably locations weren't too much because this movie is just kind of what, like, a series of stupider and stupider places for Jean Claude Van Damme to fight a guy. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> true. Fair. But honestly, the production quality isn't that bad. Like, I would say, yeah. I would say, like, three or four mil. Okay. Yeah. Uh, six. Yeah. Six million dollars. Okay. Six. Okay. Six okay. million dollars. Ended up making right. 24 worldwide, so pretty good. Nice. Yeah, and, not bad. And apparently there was a, a sequel in development that never materialized. I don't know what that would have been. I, yeah. The yeah. thing about making yeah. sequels to any of the, like, Chuck Norris, John claude Van Damme, they're the same guy in every movie anyway, so what does it matter? Just put him, I mean, we did Kickboxer the other week. It's not it's radically different than this movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically... This- this is a be- yeah, this, this is basically is a, a better bit... kickboxer. Uh yes, yes, definitely. And it's made uh, by the same people who made Kickboxer. Yeah. Uh, yes, it is. God. Sheldon Ledich 
uh, who is the uh, writer director, director here, uh, yeah. along with Van Damme, because this is mm-hmm. uh, like Kickboxer. He and uh, he and Van Damme wrote Kickboxer. They also wrote this. This is his feature directorial debut. He did not direct Kickboxer, oh, okay. Um, okay, but he did oh, write it oh. along with Van Damme. Uh, this movie seemed to avoid all of the. Uh, very cringy sort of 80s like well, questionable content i think a key thing uh, there is this film is not from the canon entertainment group oh that would do our it. our last two that movies were both made by canon this film oh, not okay. made by canon well i mean cyborg made it work uh, as we all know <laughs> but um i th- yeah cyborg I mean, so classy so. you know yeah, very cla- nothing disturbing very in that classy. movie at all no, um no so yeah, th- th- this is this is. It's still got a lot of the canon, uh, sure, like vibe to it. But yeah, it's not yeah. as gross as a canon. It's movie. got the camp without the well, sleaze. Actually, it does you know? have the sleaze, but it's Van Damme who's the victim of sexual harassment right. in this movie, well, which I was think... pretty shocked by. Yeah, do you Van- think he... Jean Claude Van Damme oh. in this movie is playing like as as close? Oh, my internet cut out there for a second. Okay. Jean-Claude Van Damme in this movie is playing, like, as close, like, as much of an ingenue as a mix of martial artist yeah. expert can be. Yes. He is. He's, he's such an innocent little babe in this, despite the he's fact got... that he yeah. kicks tons of ass in it. Well, that's kind of the line he tries to ride a little, a little bit in a lot of these movies. He is not. You know? I think one of the one of the reasons we love Van Damme on this show is he is not. A, he does not have the machismo of some of the other guys. Mm-hmm. I yes. mean, he is a, obviously like a super fit martial arts dude, but he doesn't. Yes. He's, he's not fronting the way some of the other guys are, and oftentimes, one could say the criticism of him is oftentimes his characters are just like, I just care too much about people. You know, yeah. I just love everyone, yes. and Which, I have no flaws. I, mean, I don't have a problem with that, actually. <laughs> yeah, for a movie like yeah. this, I mean this this is this is a kind of exactly what I want out of an action shelf movie. It has yes. just enough going on to seat us mm-hmm. between the fights, and this is actually one of the longer movies we've done. Let's at 108 minutes. And I think it, it actually works really well. Like the pacing yeah. is really good. There's some there's some parts in the middle that I question, uh, but yeah, uh, I'd say overall the structure is pretty good. It's yeah, pretty solid. Uh, and there's yeah. action all the way through. Oh, um, that's the thing about Kickboxer is basically the whole movie is training up to the final fight. Here we actually yes. get the fighting competition movie we want. With I mean, it's not yeah. really a, a singular competition, but a, a, a fight. I mean, there's many a Van Damme movie about an underground fighting ring. This is like the most Street Fighter movie I've ever seen. I was going to say, um, this <laughs> actually feels more like a Street Fighter game than the Street the Fighter real, movie he made. Yeah, yeah, um, exactly, which he was in. Because every yeah. single person he fights has, like, their gimmick. <laughs> yeah. And yes. as you mentioned, Elliot, their setting. <laughs> I it's like this. Guy. I I the will say location. they they went out the gate. I think the the order of the the opponents was maybe not quite. They should have mixed up that order a little bit because they came out swinging with the I with the Scottish dude. That and guy, then the next yes. two guys were just sort of like Meh. yeah. Then it was like mullet with metal teeth and uh, yeah. a guy in a uh, pretty uh, boy wrestling outfit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in, he's in the 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 wrestling singlet. Uh, that one is most is more exciting because it's in the pool than it has anything to do with that mm-hmm. guy. Um, and they but both then, are wearing the yeah. Uh, oh, they the have to. Yeah. Same yes. outfit. Yeah. Is that yeah. part of the rules of the tournament? <laughs> yeah. Is that what we're yeah. I mean, they provided Lisbon, that to Van Dam, and they knew. Lisbon, you fit. you watched the same movie as I did. You got as much about <laughs> Cynthia's character as I did. Of okay. course, that was okay. part of the rules. You know what? Yes. Look it, at it, her. This, this She's nasty. Sense. She loves yeah. it. <laughs> I also got to say, a ve- very rare on the action shelf a female villain in your movie yeah and oh man is this it may be 1990 but is this an 80s power boss lady mm-hmm. oh, oh yes. man she would very much like to talk to the manager 
Yeah. <laughs> Gaslight, gatekeep, girl boss. Oh, man. Mm. Whole I, movie. I was so disappointed because mm. I thought there was one point when it seemed like Brian Thompson was maybe going to turn against her, and I really wanted that. Where, like, yeah. the muscle bound hunks are like, we're not going to take this anymore. And it turns into like yeah. a weird, Alas. what would be a feminist movie, except for now it's, but it's the structure of that where it's like, we're tired of the way you treat us. <laughs> I would have loved that so much, but yeah, it didn't, it didn't end up happening. But yes, Deborah oh, well. Renard, who plays Cynthia in this movie is going for it. Oh yes. Yes. Everybody is hamming it up in this film I think and we, we love it. Everybody has, yes. I, I, I'm not going to say like everybody's, great but everybody is great at being in this movie they're doing exactly what is required for lionheart uh yeah i yeah. love harrison page as joshua oh man that scene yes <laughs> at the end when he's just like he's gonna fucking kill you <laughs> yeah and he just i, keeps I mean that. like it was acceptable in the 80s oh yes. uh, yes. but like oh, yeah <laughs> I mean, the bit where he's straight up eating a bucket of KFC, it's like, guys, come on. Yeah, yeah. Really? It's just... But, like, and, and it's so odd because he does have, like, that moment of pathos towards the end when, yeah. when he and uh, Leon are, like, having their heart-to-heart -heart before this fight with, with uh, Attila. And it's like, oh, why couldn't it be more of that? He's clear, like, yeah. you guys set it up. Oh, clearly like this is this is a uh, uh, morally compromised uh black fighting manager number two for this month of van damme movies after kickboxer yes the, this this basically the same characters i can't stress how much this is essentially the same movie yes oh, yes actually yes, now that i think about it that guy the guy, uh, that this uh, yeah. character kickboxer, is kickboxer 100 that this the, guy is much better than the guy in kickboxer both Agreed. the both the yes. character and the performance, because this what, yes. this is almost like like I said, this being the same movie is written by the same people. It's almost like eh, Kickboxer didn't turn out the way we wanted it to, so this is draft two. Yes, yeah, and it is better. Uh, it it is I definitely better. I think I think across the, the board. Should the movie have focused on their like? Obviously, this the movie is what it is. It's not going to be a uh, deep <laughs> introspection. To the, uh... I just like <laughs> I like that you mid sentence realize whatever I'm asking for is way too much out of it's Lionheart. It's, we only have 108 minutes, listen. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, but should this movie have focused on their relationship and how you know they each bring out the best parts of each I other? Think... What I'm suggesting is that they're a couple. Uh, yes. Well, I think. Oh, yeah. I, I was going to say, like, when I was looking up the director, I was like, oh, so this is just all of the homoeroticism is like implied in the Top Gun way. Okay, got it. Got mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Well, I think the, 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 the thing about. Well, one of the things I actually really like about the movie is that they don't have a, a love interest for Van mm -hmm. Damme. He is harassed yeah. by Cynthia, and he is just taking care of his uh, sister in law and niece. Because I was waiting for and ready to Guys. hate the romance I, to develop yeah. between yep. him and the sister-in-law. And I was yep. waiting for the... This movie is rife with sexy sax, but weirdly used sexy sax. Yeah. Yes, because it's always like the very platonic conversations he's having <laughs> with his sister-in-law. And they're never even really... There's the chemistry is not there romantically. No, like, and, and, not and honestly, like the, the the movie is so much more about the relationship with the niece. It's like the the this yes. like the sister in law is cool too because her daughter's cool. Like that's sort of the yes. yeah. the way. It's like I really yeah. care about my niece, and yeah, you have to take care of her too. So yeah, but it's just like yeah, yeah. I guess you too. Yeah. Um, and and this will not be the last we hear from writer director Sheldon Ledich, who will also finish out this month with uh, Double Impact, the movie with two Van Dams. I mean, you know, uh is it a parent it, trap remake or You know yes, what? That is a little bit <laughs> I'll just say <laughs> it's closer to the parent trap than you might expect is what I said. <laughs> but yeah. It is oh, long no. I will say he does play long separated twins. Legitimately. Yeah, that's, that yeah. I do yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and one has oh, slicked man. down hair and the other one doesn't, and that's how you can tell them apart. Uh, and mm -hmm. their names are Alex mm -hmm. and Chad, which I just think is amazing. Because, um, of course, they are. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, yeah, Lionheart. Um, th uh, the, other weird, yeah. Th the other thing that immediately struck me about this movie, when it started, 
is he's in the French Foreign Legion, and he has another movie a couple yeah. years later, written also by Sheldon Lettish, called Legionnaire. Yeah, yeah. So is this a pr- is this a sequ- or that movie is a prequel to this movie? You think? I, <laughs> I mean, I'm trying a, to find the a, cinematic universe. A here. deep prequel, yeah. since from what I what I remember, uh, Legionnaire is like set in the 1920s. Uh, okay, okay. So maybe mm, his. So well, he's maybe a. His, he's a. Uh... A time lord. He's a, a Highlander. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, Highlander. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. You feel yeah. that boy? It's the quickening. There's a. If you guys he didn't stay, been it's, in it's Highlander. It's a. Oh, Van Damme and Highlander would have been great, actually. Um. Although, yeah. although, so much of that movie is the weirdness of that Christopher Lambert performance. Um. Sure. Which is like Hollywood. Don't remake it. Every couple of years, they talk about remaking Highlander. I'm like, you can't touch how I'll strange that movie is. Um, yeah. Only in the '80s could There's you no make way. a movie that weird, and and release it as like a blockbuster <laughs> film. Um, so yes, he's he's in the f- uh, Foreign Legion. Oh wait, but before that, I forgot we we start in media res, if you will, yeah, with the death of his oh, brother, yes. who, <laughs> yes. for being the catalyst, is such a uh, non-entity in this movie. Like I it, had to remind myself that that scene happened. I just uh, as and like a man a, is lit on fire in this. Oh, scene. because so, right off the there's there's not a this movie's not rife with one-liners, but it has a, a, a handful, and they're mostly pretty good, I think. And this is yeah. the first one where then this drug deal uh, gone bad. Van Damme's brother is screwing this guy over. Is that the idea? Or he's I can't tell. Was he an undercover? No, he wasn't no. an undercover cop, right? No. No, no because that just... th- that's a whole thing later where the sister-in-law blames Van Damme for his life of crime. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay gotcha, gotcha. Um, but, I... yeah, when the when the bad guy uh, realizes uh, this... Oh, yeah, he... No, sorry, he's getting ripped off, isn't he? Because he's the one that says, this is sugar. And the yes, guy says... Yes, and then the other guy... Right. And then killed... Yeah, immediately. Like, what is? Because he goes, wait a minute, this is of... sugar, and then he, the guy comes out with a gas can and goes, and this is gasoline. <laughs> and then they proceed to light this guy on fire. Lisman, we love uh-huh. this podcast. Loves guys being lit on fire. Is this the fastest mm-hmm. any movie has gotten to a guy on fire? <laughs> I, it's yeah, like within I the first minute. Of any other. Yeah, <laughs> and this yeah, guy, and they this light is... this guy up. It is very quick. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it might be. I, I can't think of anything that was quicker. <laughs> and then I like this movie. It's like, oh no, we're not we're not gonna pull back. And it's not only gonna see this guy run around on fire. You're then gonna see his charred body rolled into the <laughs> ER. Holy shit! <laughs> what was this? Was this movie rated R? Yeah. Or what was? It? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, also, yeah. lest we forget, not like that much. No, content. but lest we forget. There's some prime buns on display later. You there can, are some. That's... Yeah. And there's a moment where you can basically see Jean-Claude Van Damme's whole ass penis through that those tidy whities. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, that's also true. pretty yes. common. Oh, right. Yeah. That yeah, man is that. never afraid. Well, I wouldn't even say he's never afraid to show off. I would say that man insists on showing off in his movies. It is rare. You know it, has it is rare. Right? You. Yeah. <laughs> no, if I look like him, I would, I would just be like, can I be naked in the whole movie? Um, yeah, like I always, I always see like the content warning on IMDb. Mm-hmm. Just I don't know why. Um, and and for Van Dam, it's always nudity, mild. And I'm like, well, that means we're that's his see ass. His bare ass. We will not yeah. see. Yeah, no, I, I was well once again because it's not canon. I guess is why I shouldn't be surprised. No boobs in this movie, which is rare for one of these action movies. But oftentimes in the Van Dams, it's like, no, no, I'm the one taking my clothes off. Nothing will distract. Yeah, from again, I, I Jean Claude Van Damme is as close to an ingenue as you can get. While also he is. is, beat he ass. is. I, I feel like I feel like he and Stallone were the guys who were always wanting to show their asses because every Stallone movie true. has Look something. Yeah, it's just like they're very proud of those bonds, man. They work hard. Uh, yeah, sure. sure, uh, sure. So yeah, they they wheel this guy in the hospital, and immediately it's like. Yeah, your husband has completely been covered in flames. He's not quite dead, but also you have no insurance. <laughs> Sorry. Is this a uh, critique of the American uh, uh, medical system? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> like nobody seems to be. Uh, the movie could have pushed that harder. The fact that, yeah, yeah. 
It's like, well, you know, if everybody was provided health care. This, this, this is a very martial arts idea of like, uh, the the whatever financial issues there are I- in American life, it's it's only there as a reason for somebody to start fighting people. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Because that's all you're looking for. Where's the hook that yeah, brings and you're in like, all oh, the fighting? Great. And they talk about it. It's a, this is such a great setup to go to Van Dam too, because there's like, well, is there anybody else? Is there any other family he has out there? And of course, with this guy, this guy's fucking consumed by flames. And he's he yes. covered in burns. He's going, Leon, Leon. <laughs> Cut to Van Damme with a sledgehammer. Yeah. Is he doing anything with that sledgehammer? Or is he just working out with it? Breaking rocks yeah. in the hot sun. I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know. That's probably what he, being in the military it, is like. Because it seems... Because then what happens next is he gets uh, a, a letter delivered or he gets bullied by some officers. And then <laughs> two guys in actually... way worse shape than Van Damme are like, yeah. hey, <laughs> hey, whatever muscles. Does he uh, he does not stab, stab that dude. No, no, he stabs the, right, the letter that would be in wild. between his legs. He stabs the yes. letter. Yeah, the guy has the letter on his car seat, and he stabs the letter and picks it up. He's like, what do you know? It is addressed to me. <laughs> and then That is how I greet everyone. I don't, way, so. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know much about modern-day French Foreign Legion. There's a line later sure. that, uh, that his manager has about, uh, that Joshua has about, like, isn't that only in old movies? And I'm going, that's the same thought I had. I haven't seen, I haven't, I haven't heard the French Foreign Legion mentioned in anything past the 1940s. Yeah, it's kind right? of a weird like, hole for them. Is it, is it like, <laughs> I mean, do they, do they tell scary stories to children in, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, oh my god, what's that country that Van Damme's from? Belgium. 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 I'm like, fucking, fucking Poirot, where's Poirot from? <laughs> uh, do they tell scary stories to the kids in Belgium about, like, that's like the black bag? <laughs> French foreign oh, legion like will come uh, and get you oh, if you're not good. <laughs> yeah, because Van Damme keeps making movies about it, so he's just like, oh no, you know the worst thing is I could be in the foreign legion in this movie. Uh, <laughs> he's working through his demons, John. He's facing yeah. his deepest. Well, and the fear. thing about it in like old noir movies and stuff is always like when you when you have nowhere else to go, you're wanted and whatever. You join the foreign legion, you know, right? That's the yeah. Uh, I think there, I think there scarily might be an Abbott and Costello in the foreign legion movie, which I'm sure is yeah. does not age well at all. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, I'm just trying to see if there's anything. I, I mean, they're still out there. I don't know if they quite represent what they used to. Um, yeah. But but yeah, but it's 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 pretty bad because he's like, yeah, my brother was lit on fire, and they're like, yeah, well, too bad. You work for us. That's nuts. You got to stay here. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. Um, uh, that's the deal. You signed the contract. I don't know what to tell. Yeah, you. what's it? You've got what's this line? Is this like you've six got, weeks? Yeah, you've got six weeks left. Don't turn it into six years, because that will totally Is that happen. How the military work? Yeah, I was. I, once again, say, I don't know because it's the French Foreign Legion, which has always been this mysterious organization that only exists in movies to me. <laughs> it, it, it was making me think he was in a military prison because generally they don't increase your sentence well, uh, or your service. The thing, the thing about uh, it is, I think, and the movie is very vague with his backstory because they also do want to be the best guy ever. But he was a criminal yes. of some type and he has basically run away to the French Foreign Legion. It was, I get the sense it was yes. sort of like a, it was either jail or the French Foreign Legion for this guy. Yeah, that was kind of gotcha. the vibe I got. Because that's, oh, okay. that's what the wife is all upset about. His sister-in-law is like, you abandoned yes. him uh, and so he continued down this life of crime, and you escaped from it. Mm. The movie, but like Man, I said, the I movie's did not get any. Well, because the movie's very Damme. vague about because they don't want you to think of Van Damme as a criminal. You know, like yeah. he's, he's still the yeah. best. I'm sure he was <laughs> like stealing bread for orphans or something like that. You know, this guy, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lionheart. Yeah. Yes. Uh, come on, this guy. Once again, you got a big heart, Lionheart. Um. 
I love that they call him Lionheart, and I love that, of course, the poster is Van Dam is Lionheart. <laughs> also, do you show a favor, everybody, and go look at the trailer because. <laughs> The trailer is amazing. In between scenes, they just start putting letters, and he goes, dun, 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 V, dun, 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 A, dun, 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 and, <laughs> and they just start spelling out Van Damme. And they've got the great classic 90s in a world voice going, he was a soldier in a world he didn't create. You know, it's like, oh, my God. It's, it's perfect. It's so perfect. Just like, uh <laughs> Uh, oh man. So yeah. Uh, so he uh, he he gets he gets sent to the hot box, which is classic. Uh, yes. Like uh, once again, yeah. When you think about, you're right about the. It does have the prisoner of war feel to it, Lisman. It does have that yeah. like uh, Steve McQueen and Great Escape kind of vibe to it when they send him to the hot box. Exactly. But of course, um, literally no one in the French Foreign Legion is as good at fighting as Van Damme, so he's able no. to beat no, this entire not. platoon of guys. Mm-hmm. He stabs a man through the hand. He does. Uh, in the sequence. He does. Which is, I thought, a bit extreme for, like, I understand he needs to break out, but this is somebody he's been, you know, <laughs> situated with. Sorry, I'm uh, really there. sorry. I know you just told me about your son who was born, but uh, I have to stab you in the <laughs> hand now. But it's, uh, honestly, though, it seems like every single person in the French Foreign Legion hates his character and is mean to him, so it's okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, until the very true. end where they completely change their opinion of him because he <laughs> earns their well, respect in a fight. The end of this movie is nuts. I Was there a specific moment? Where, we're, we're just going to jump there, but was there a specific moment where they were swayed? Because it seemed like this change <laughs> happened off screen, and that's it, not what it, I would recommend in a it, screenplay. It seems but, to uh, be like Rocky movie logic where just like the yeah. sheer goodwill of the crowd has turned yeah. them yeah, it's I like get, between yeah. that and i think i mean they were standing right outside hearing ashley johnson just that's right there is the shot of them wail because <laughs> oh. she doesn't want leon to leave i have to go and they're Do like you have oh, to go man, but i can't go with you a little eight-year-old girl crying oh fuck yeah all right. oh, man. We, we may be the french <laughs> foreign legion but we're not bastards you know like yeah <laughs> <laughs> right, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, all that. Uh, and so yes, he escapes. He drives a jeep out through a chain link fence. Um, mm-hmm, by the way, I mm-hmm. don't think he kills anybody in this movie. Yeah, uh, I don't think. Does, no, yeah. Does anyone other than the brother even die? Period. Um. So- Somebody must. I don't think so, which is actually, no. it's it's a lot of fighting, no. but they make a point. And that's the thing I could not understand about these fights were, are they to the yes. death? Because it seems like the other guys are trying to actively murder him, and then he is just yes. taking them until they are unconscious. Yes. He, well, it seems like he's, he's the, the only person. Right. Yeah. Well, right. yes, of course. Right. Yeah. He's the face. They are the heel, of course. Uh, oh, this, yeah. mo- this yeah. movie is yeah a, a parade of heels is my point. I, point I did watch said. this directly after watching Dynamite last night, so... Perfect. And I, I will say, probably not a whole lot of difference. <laughs> like, right, no. Right into very similar vibes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, so uh, he... And then he hops a boat to uh, to Los Angeles. So he York. thinks Los Angeles, but... Yeah. <laughs> Which I also love that idea when he's just like, you said this boat was going to Los Angeles. This is clearly New York. <laughs> yep, clearly New York. We can 100% why? tell with that establishing shot. Mhm. Why 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 just why not just go to Los Angeles? Well, he he, he can he has to get out of you know, out of there quickly, right? And so yeah. why, like why do they lie to him? Yeah, well, why doesn't the movie uh, just go to Los Angeles? I'm, again, this is my this is my uh, damsel in, Van Damsel in Distress theory. <laughs> Fuck yeah! All that's right, that's so I'm good. gone. Was, yeah. You guys do the rest of the good. show. When you Woo! you got to go out on top, you know how to work. We, yep. we, that's uh, my time, everybody. Good night. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Because yeah. he's got it. so pretty. Mm-hmm. Someone else says it in the movie later that he is very oh, pretty. Oh, I definitely uh, have that line. Um. He works. He. <laughs> They, he's 
doing good in the boiler room and he's ripped oh, as hell. Oh, they, man. They're lying to him because they just want him to work down there. Here's the thing I love yes. about these movies, and particularly canon films a lot like this, but, like, once again, Stallone movies, all this stuff. You mentioned Top Gun earlier. It is like, this is heterosexual men going like, well, in this context, I can't appreciate the work he's put in. You know, it's yeah. sort of like, I'm not, it's not a he's sexual got thing. excellent form. Oh, yeah, it's just, that's the thing. Because, like, I I mean, I'm, I'm sure there were many uh, uh, women and, and gay men who enjoyed these shots of Van Damme. But these movies are really targeted at guy guys in this way that's just like, but it's okay, you can appreciate uh, it, it's just like it's yeah, oh, yeah. He, you know, oh, yeah. he must have put in some time in the gym. I wonder. It's yeah, it's like a, it's <laughs> like watching a sports car go fast. You know, yeah. just seeing a, a well-built machine yeah, doing just, what it does best. Did he? Uh, I just wonder what kind of crunches he's doing. I, I could probably put oh, those yeah. in my routine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, a, that's the when, some the divorce dad buns. energy. I, know, I mean, I thought that when the guy later, we just did, the, when the guy says you're so pretty, and then hits him with the one liner of I don't know if I want to fight you or fuck you. I'm like, dude, that sounds like you're dealing with something, not him. Yeah, like, <laughs> hey, bud, do you want to talk about yeah. it? Yeah, hey man, we don't have to fight. It's just. You, just, to yeah, fight. what you're clearly wrestling with Do you want a little kiss? Yeah. A kiss a roof from yeah. <laughs> Look, man, whatever you want, it's, it's cool. I'm cool. Uh, with you. You'll have to buy me a drink first. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh man, I just uh, it, it's yeah, it, it is this weird vibe of particularly Van Damme. Where Van everybody Dam wants to fuck Van Damme. Well, yeah, Van Damme yeah, was uh, always the pretty boy of these guys, like Norris doesn't have this energy no. Stallone nope. somewhat more but he's such a like his face is such a specific like thing Van Damme is even if he didn't have the muscles he's a very pretty man and then you add yeah. the accent on top of it he does have sort of mm -hmm. that kind of romantic kind of you know French yeah. Belgian uh, thing and, and yeah he, he was he's kind of the only heartthrob of the bunch Everybody else is kind of weird looking. Nobody, I'm sure there, once again, I'm sure there were plenty of people who were, but it's like, I just can't see women going like, oh, that Schwarzenegger. It just, it's not <laughs> I mean, the, you it's know, not I'm the sure same vibe. Right. Like I said, I'm yeah. sure it is, like, but it's like. Like, right, it's that, it's that uh, power fantasy versus like. Yes. Something, something being actually attractive. Yeah. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. he's classically yes. handsome, and once again, in the in the types of parts he's playing, he's also like you like him. You're like, oh, this guy is sweet and romantic. And it's, once again, not, you never saw Schwarzenegger. I mean, like he had a daughter in Commando, but it's just like, yes, they took my daughter. Oh no! <laughs> it's just like I under, I understand Schwarzenegger loves people, but you know, it's not sure, at the forefront sure. of what he's playing. Where it's here, it's just like. Every scene with him and Ashley Johnson in this movie was clearly designed to make the theater go, "Oh, I like <laughs> this guy. Look at this guy." Uh, I feel like that's often the case with Van Damme movies. Yeah, as we saw in the other two films, and both of them that we've seen, he's uh, such a sweetheart he is, in Cyborg. Yeah, yeah. As Gibson, as Gibson Rickenbacker. <laughs> Name. We can't we can't anyway. get past the name. This we can't get past the fact that his character's name is Gibson Rickenbacker in Cyborg. <laughs> I think I have a name for my next D and D character. Oh my god, uh, Gibson Rickenbacker. <laughs> um, yeah, my name is Gibson Rickenbacker, and uh, it's you know. right. I'm gonna fight to cry now. Uh, <laughs> so the 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 commander of the French Foreign Legion is furious van damme sure gun. and yeah i love this scene where he goes to the whatever this this french government representative mm -hmm. is and the guy's like jeez man i i don't know all we can do is uh, like uh, put out the warrant for him like he's almost just like what, what more would you like us to do man I we can't we can't go Kill into him. the u.s like as a military action like that when just because a guy that? left the army like uh yeah, yeah. he shouldn't have done that but like once he leaves France, uh, I don't know. Kind of, yeah. But of course, yeah. this guy has his own goons. Mm -hmm. Yes, so he hired his own goons. Uh, are they part of the French Legion, or what? I... Who, who and what are they? Well, one of them uh, is the bad guy from Kickboxer. 
Oh, right, because he's good friends with that guy. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, Michael Kesey, uh, okay. uh, gotcha. who played Tong Po in Kickboxer. Yes. Uh, yes. And also, okay. he's all he was also in Bloodsport as well, and uh, they did some other stuff okay. later, but we're not. And he was also oh, as as he was the fight trainer for Van Dam in last week's Cyborg. Oh yes, we all remember. Um, mm. Now, uh, so, uh, <laughs> um, but but who but who and what are they? I, like, are they assassins? Are they? I mean, they seem to be like. French FBI agents. Yeah, they. Okay. Yeah, they do seem to be. Belgian or whatever. Are, are, yeah, are they the equivalent of like the NCIS of the French Foreign Legion? I don't. Once again, it. <laughs> if they Unclear. have, if they have five lines of dialogue between them, I'd be surprised. They are just there to stand around and be threatening, and every time the camera pans them, it goes. Wana, wana, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and then and then and then they get beat up by Van Dam later. Like it's just they're yeah. they're Multiple they're not. Times or was it just the one time? I, it was I just the one. Remember. It's just that they have the okay. fight in the alley later, right? I think that's yeah. the only time okay. they actually yeah. throw down because eventually yeah. they just go to his boss and go, "Will you just give him to us?" And that's the the aforementioned Cynthia, who hmm. <laughs> we'll talk about across the board in this movie, but also. Hmm. The completely insane scene when Van Damme is like, maybe I'll even rescue Cynthia from this life. And Josh was just like, she's running this fucking She invented <laughs> this life. <Yeah. laughs> she... I was born what? into it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was born into it. <laughs> she, she is the toxicity of this world. She's the problem. Yes. Uh, yeah. yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> I enjoyed that. So he does... What was... What was with the montage in the middle? This is, uh, The pacing of the film sort of hits a bump in the road when they have a montage together oh her uh, the fashion like, montage yeah yeah it, it starts with van damme's bare ass and then it's a hard <laughs> cut to a pretty i mean woman, let me just say whatever uh, whatever follows i i i was i didn't catch what followed i was still thinking they, about them they, months, but uh <laughs> well, they they did a montage of their day together it was almost like they went on a date well you but... i i yeah the, the pretty woman comparison exactly it because she talks about um by the way, is the implication that he, she took his clothes off of him during the night in that scene? Yes. He yes. was clothed. Yes. Again, <laughs> Jean-Claude Van Damme's in distress. Yeah, because he wakes up this and he's is, like, This is usually a scene reserved for female characters. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell. Is yeah. this is this progressive? I mean, no. It's still deeply, like... <laughs> bad <laughs> it's just it's just notable it so strange to see yeah the, i think a, that's a the thing is, is like it's, it's just yeah, an oddity yeah. it's not i'm not sure it has any new commentary or anything it's just unusual and so you're yeah. like yeah well, i don't but uh, but i but i did eventually start en enough scenes into it, i'm going like oh, do get your hands off him lady good lord yeah like yeah. god he said no <laughs> Uh, oh, and, I do love that. And when he... she said she burned his clothes. Yeah. Do we? And she didn't deny that she did that. No, no. Yeah. She... My question is, she said did she, she smell them first? No. How, and how long did she spend smelling? <laughs> um, that's my question. Listen, I, the I think we. I, I was going to say, I think <laughs> no. we've opened up uh, some things into your mindset there a little bit. But uh, <laughs> how, now, how long? I'm just saying, she smell a vision was invented before. <laughs> I it would have been a different Did you guys experience. catch that Billy Blanks was one of the guys at the uh, at the French Foreign no. Legion as escape? He's credited no. only as African Legionnaire. Um, but uh, Interesting. damn, I I know I feel bad that I missed him because I love Billy Blanks and I he is too. he is all over these movies. We're gonna talk about him again in a couple weeks, Lisman, in Blood Fist with Don the Dragon Wilson, um, in which he does Blood play a character Fist. named Black Rose. So. Excellent. <laughs> Baby. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but oh, we need more seal on this podcast. We do need Hell more yeah. seal. But, yeah, there was uh, he was Ty Bow in it somewhere in this movie. Uh, I think My he's seal. another. All these kickboxing guys seem to know each other uh, is what I get from Apparently. when we cover these movies. Yeah. Um, so, he, he yeah, he, he's upset because he's been duped. They made him shovel mm -hmm. coal for who knows how long. And now he's right. like, "What is this? This is New York. This is not L.A." Yeah, but it's and like so he's wandering. He's wandering oh, the streets oh, of New sorry. York, and what 
yeah. what, what is he in New York for five minutes before he stumbles upon a street fight? Mm-hmm. Yes, the first thing he runs into is a street fight. Um, he's just that good. He just fighting just, just follows this guy, man. Well, okay, actually, that's the second thing. The first thing he does is try to uh, call collect. No, the, which actually, uh, which yes, which makes this funnier that he has no money for the phone, and then he's like, "I need money." What's that? A street fight is just over there. <laughs> It's I could probably that. make some money from that. Yeah. <laughs> just... I, used, I just got out of the French Legion. I could go kick some ass for money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. I'm an excellent fighter. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, that's it's, right. It's, it's turning a little wise out now. Uh, I mean, I've <laughs> never said... At least mine is. It's never been an accurate impression we do of the guy. Uh, <laughs> we honest. rarely do accurate impressions at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We need to get we need to get back to a Bronson movie because that's, that's my best one. But, yeah. Uh, I mean, our Seagal is pretty good. Um, I was going to say, your guys' Seagal is pretty good. The, yeah, just yeah. that sort of motherfucking thing. I'll tell you what, I would have solved this problem in five seconds if the line I've on me. Um, that's right. I haven't that, seen they, in 45 years. <laughs> they, talk about a guy who never shows his ass, because I don't think he has one. I think I mean, that's it. I think it's a flat butt. I think it's all gut. He is with him. an ass. Hill ass. Yeah, I think that. Is, I yes. think it's just a straight down. It's all in the gut. Mm-hmm. The that he that he gained the weight, but I think the ass stayed a skinny guy's ass. That's my theory. Okay. I put more thought into Seagal's ass yeah. than. <laughs> Do you say a fur donk a donk? Uh, yeah, for a donk a donk. There you the go. Front. There you go. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He does. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, he is the one. We always love that clip when, when they're asking him about the, how tough any action star is. And they yeah. go like, well, well, who do you think would win in a, in a fight between you and Van Damme? And he goes, could I laugh in your face? That's not a, that's not a response. Yeah, it was just anybody just goes, well, do, what do you think you could beat Chuck Norris? Could I laugh in your face? <laughs> just like... All it's of these a, men, not a yes. The thing we've talked about is all of these men have actual championships and fighting records, yeah. and Seagal's fight background is mostly his own say of things that happen. Yeah. This- well, he <laughs> studied on ancient Japanese mountains. John. Right, right, yeah, and he the defeated court, yeah. the yakuza. Look, just t- mm-hmm. get, do us a favor, everybody. Go. T- we'll always end up talking about Seagal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, just go. Just go Google Steven <laughs> Seagal yakuza. And have fun because yeah. there's a ton of amazing stories of his battles with the yakuza. Mm-hmm. That all told by him. I'm not worlds. sure how they compare, but that reminds me a great deal of Vince McMahon. <laughs> just and oh, anything he man. says. Yes. Those his... two are very similar. Very are similar vibes. Similar. Yeah. yeah. I just similar. mean I don't know who's worse. Uh, oh man! Yeah. I mean, because I just got done listening to six episodes of Behind the Bastards about yep. Vince McMahon, <laughs> yeah. and yep. there is some stuff that yeah, I yeah, even yeah, didn't yeah. know. The, uh, yeah. I, the also the John Oliver piece about him is great, and uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, if anyone's seen the Dark Side of Wrestling, that show, excellent. Yep. Uh, but yeah, there is literally no story that isn't just oh, this man is the worst person in the world. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah, boy, real tough because they're victimizing different kinds of people, but probably equal amounts of damage done to those. Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's a, they're running neck and neck for worst person in entertainment. <laughs> um, yeah. But you know who's not Jean Claude Van Damme? Jean Claude Van Damme. I don't know much about the man's politics, but he never... seems very sweet. Yeah, uh, and the the, the uh, interviewer also asked him about the about the uh, Steven Seagal's response. And and instead of being like defensive or anything, he's just like, oh, who knows? You know, like he's very sweet. He's like, oh, that's uh, lovely. Yeah, I yeah. Think he's, he's, a... he's very sweet to Seagal, even though Seagal is a giant. he's a pretty <laughs> mild mannered like, guy. I don't know his politics either. And you know what? What I love is I don't think he really talks about him. You never hear his stand. Yeah. And more actors need to take that attitude. Just yeah, like... I was a lot happier before I knew what anyone thought of things. <laughs> You know what the big uh, a big thing for me now is 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 COVID is a, is quite like yep. I'm finding out about so many celebrities who are just so anti-vax, anti-mask, and and it's yeah. sh- like shocking how many people are are taking hard stances on that. Man, I don't know. I I gotta say, like, Tilda Swinton like was the most surprising to me. When Tilda Swinton Tilda goes, Swinton? this is me finding out about that. Yeah, she, she she goes next movie I'm doing. I don't care what the policy is. I'm not wearing that fucking mask anymore. 
God. Yeah. Good God. Why? Why? Right? It's just... Ugh. Yeah, yeah. Also, <sighs> yeah, I don't want to just keep doing that, but I don't know if you guys saw the James Vanderbeek thing the other day, too. Unfortunately, oh, Dawson... No. Yeah, Dawson said some stuff ripping into Biden and uh like in a and, and you know and then Fox News is going I mean in a in a right wing way or a left wing way in, in, in a way in a, I'll, I'll rip into Biden but but in like a it, you know in, in in a way that that definitely helps Trump and in a way where Fox News mm, is like yeah, Dawson's yeah, yeah, gotcha, saying gotcha, it gotcha, right gotcha. Try, he was trying yeah. to say it in that way where it's like, I just have some concerns, but is 100%. Oh, I'm just asking the question. Yeah, it's yeah. that thing where it's like, no political agenda here, <laughs> but let's talk about the man's competency from a mental standpoint. And you're like, no, mm-hmm. no, 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 no. Don't do it, man. Mm-hmm. Don't you do it. Yeah. Uh, right on, yes. Dawson. Yeah, I mean, once again, once as soon as Fox News is showing clips and going, this guy's yeah. talking the truth, you're like, yo, shit. The next thing the words, you should do. In the words of Kesha... James <laughs> Vanderdouche. I mean, yeah. I will say, he's one of those guys where it's like, I didn't immediately think it, but yeah, he does kind of give me a vibe of a guy it, who it might kinda, be yeah, more right wing. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right. So, yeah, JC. But not Van Dam. Not Van Dam. He, uh, he, he goes, he's just, he comes in here, guys are fighting. Uh, immediately, this is where he meets Joshua. Uh, yes. Who who's gonna who immediately goes like, what's your name? And he's like, uh, Leon. And he's like, oh, lion, the lion. Everybody fight the lion, man. And instantly, mm-hmm. king just, of the jungle, king, king of, the, of jungle. the jungle. And then I kept waiting. I kept waiting for 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 Leon to be like, actually, the lion lives on the plains of <laughs> in Africa. They do not That's... live in the jungle. <laughs> Well, I, we, we, we said it last week on the show, but just for to, to reiterate, the tagline for this movie is amazing, which is, when the streets are a jungle, there can only be one king. <laughs> that's, oh again, that's Street Fighter. That is Street <laughs> yeah. Fighter. It's, no, like, it's the tagline for a Street Fighter. This movie is better than a Street Fighter. It's a better <laughs> Street Fighter. I kept thinking that. Yes! I kept going like, this is one of the best fighting game movies I've ever seen that isn't based yeah. on a fighting game. <laughs> I it, I don't understand. This is they better than that fucking Dead or Alive title movie. on it and said oh, uh, Street Fighter. This movie has many alternate titles. I, 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 I'm glad I you said that. Uh, the, the, there was the, uh, in here about the, depending on where you saw it, this movie was either called Lionheart, Full Contact, A Wall, Wrong Bet, or just Leon. Wrong mm. Bet is probably the worst one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a reference to one line in the yeah. movie. It's yeah. a pretty good, it's a pretty good one liner. It's not a great title. Um, yeah. Full contact is okay, but you could call any martial arts like fighting yeah, movie that. Like that's nothing. Yeah, that, I think the, I think that could the, also Lionheart's be very sexual. Probably the best best option. Yeah, I think so. Lionheart is yeah. good. Yeah, uh, I yeah. think I think there is. I just want. I'm pretty sure there is a Cheyenne Fat movie that's called Full Contact. Um, but there is 1992's Full Contact Cheyenne Fat. There you go. Mm. Um, there you go. So, uh, yeah, he, of course, immediately just destroys this man. Uh, yeah, it's not a- and we've said it every time we talk about one of his movies. Uh, we've said it, you know, these last couple weeks, and it's true. Is there a better cinematic kicker than Van Damme? That man's kicks. Mm. Just, just straight yeah. kicking. I mean, obviously, you can get into, like, just movie fighting and get into stuff like Bruce Lee mm-hmm. and things like that. But just in uh, terms yeah. of not even the – but just the the, the – being able to kick on camera and look so good, oh, it just—it's yeah. always such a pleasure to watch him just kick a dude in the face. It's yes. it's it's a combination of of one Jean Claude Van Damme being very good at kicking, mm-hmm. uh, two, just the the proportion of his legs to his body, yep. like <laughs> genetically that worked out great, and they always yep. shoot it really well. Yes. I don't know who the DP yes. is on half these movies, but let's take a look. The DP always does a great job making sure that Jean Claude Van Damme's kicks are framed perfectly. Yeah, the... perfectly. You get to see how high he's kicking mm-hmm. up, and you see the angle of it. Yeah. Yeah, they Absolutely. really know how to. Um, this guy, uh, the guy who shot this movie's name Robert C. New. Interesting name. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this is the only time he worked with him, um, but he oh. did. He did a hell of a job. <laughs> 
goes, yeah. this is so bizarre. He goes on after this to be one of the main cinematographers on Beverly Hills 90210. <laughs> Not a lot of kicking okay. on that show, but... Um, no. <laughs> uh, kind of all over the place. Sort of a journeyman. He, yeah. he worked on... I love Night of the Creeps from 1986. He shot that movie. Uh, he does eventually become the cinematographer for the, uh, the Kung Fu reboot. Kung Fu The Legend Continues. So, you know. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Anyway, well shot ends up on Smallville. Oh, God, the Blade TV show. Less said about I didn't that. I know the... that existed. Oh, yeah. You guys going to cover that on Meet the Monsters? You know, I think we're going to skip every that episode? one. Every episode? I think we're going to skip that one. Single episode? Yeah. No, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, ask, uh, I'll ask Brendan. Yeah, and I'm sure he'll, give you, he'll, he'll be way on board with that. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Between you and I've it. already made I've already made these boys do so much so many things they don't want to do. <laughs> you've got this it. I don't. You uh, yeah, you've tortured them so much, Elliot. Uh, you've got to come back, <laughs> Elliot. You do have to come back and do uh, um, subspecies five because you got to do the origin of Radu movie. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's of course. That's... I'll come back for the for the late yeah that new subspecies. That's yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, do yeah, that yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, because mm-hmm. that's finally his story is told. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, but the entire saga, uh, all in film. So yeah. the, the thing about this movie, at 108 minutes, which is long for an action shelf movie, also, yes. this thing moves so fast, because we move from this underground fight to him going, to mm-hmm. Joshua being like, you're really good at fighting. You should move all the way up to, like, big business fighting pretty quick. <laughs> like, almost immediately. Well, because Joshua like, apparently knows everybody. I guess that his that's his character trait. Is that he knows everybody. Yeah. It is really convenient that he ran into this guy in the first fight. There's the, a like, there's a real fight. like uh I mean he's almost drooling, right? With going like, Oh man, my meal ticket has come in. This is yes. it. Yes. I just met out of nowhere the greatest fighter who has ever lived. The most beautiful white boy <laughs> with oh. the highest kicks. <laughs> and he literally, he has some line later, he's like, you and I are going to make so much money. Oh, oh boy. Um, and, I mean, he is very classic sort of, any boxing movie has this, right? This is sort of yeah. the classic, like, uh, you know, Mickey in the Rocky movies and stuff, right? Where it's just like, come on, Rock! Uh, you always ha- got to have these guys who have their own troubles, but have such allegiance to the fighter and stuff like that. Mm. So, and this guy, uh, I should mention, uh, Harrison Page, I said, is the name of the guy uh, who plays Joshua. And just in a billion things, every TV show mm-hmm. ever he's in, basically. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yep. and, and and he's totally solid here. Yeah. Yeah, he's when, it up yeah. I mean, just when like he's when he's given more to do than be a stereotype, <laughs> he does a really good job. Yeah, this is yeah. this is a, this is really an era, particularly in in action movies and these lower budget ones, where it's like you everyone starts as a stereotype, and then the quality of the movie I, I think ebbs and flows based on how much more they put. But the foundation is always stereotype. It's stereotype, yes. and then maybe we add like this. This is like stereotype plus one. Is basically yes. what I have. It's just like it is the stereotype, but we gave him slightly more. Whereas uh, yeah. <laughs> Kickboxer, that guy might have been stereotype minus one. <laughs> that guy, yes, that I guy. Would that, yeah. that guy was. Well, that guy was also more more dubious. The you know uh, uh, Joshua is mostly on Van Damme's side. That that other guy was also running guns on the side and and kickboxer. Oh yeah, yeah I always forgot it. That yeah, because it it I doesn't play into the it. plot at all except for it explains yeah. why he has a grenade launcher at the end of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think literally they gave him a background as a weapons dealer just to go, well, we need him to blow up a bunch of stuff at the end of the movie. Where would he get that? Oh, well maybe he's dealing them. I mean, I, I will say this movie is lacking grenade launchers, you know. This movie is uh, light is on uh, on firearms, which is unusual yeah. for because even yeah. eventually these get into that at some point. But it's it, mm-hmm. it, it's interesting. Life and death stakes are 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 in the final fight, uh, and of course mm-hmm. you know immediately when he fights the guy, Van Damme's not going to kill the guy when he's got the yeah. killing yeah. blow ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, but he takes he's Lionheart because he's Lionheart. Yeah, he's Lionheart. You got a big heart, Lionheart. <laughs> uh, so he gets taken to bigger the bigger fight, and you can tell this is the bigger, better fight because everyone here is when talking about stereotypes, stereotypical '80s rich people. Yes, and they're in a parking garage. 
I found this a little strange. It, this is a this is a classic action shelf nondescript industrial setting. Yeah, yeah. This is not the setting I would think of when I think of rich people watching people like <laughs> Yeah, but these are fight like you would think you would think if these people are so rich, it they wouldn't have to have a wherever we can have this fight that the cops aren't going to show up mentality. You're like, right. You're expecting exactly. like Django Unchained where Leonardo DiCaprio is just like doing it in his house. Yeah. Or like, a, like the back room yeah, of a fancy yeah. club or something like yeah. that, right? Like where it's like, yeah, if, exactly. If media, if media in real life has taught me anything, it's that rich people can do whatever they want and get away with it. So yeah, and it's yes. but but one of the reasons is they usually do it behind closed doors. I feel like even exactly. rich people would have trouble doing just open air fights in a parking car, and they're all in. Yeah. They're all dressed in really nice suits and evening gowns. <laughs> my, one of my favorite totally <laughs> insane moments in this movie is when that woman uh-huh. in the fancy dress gets sprayed with blood and then licks it mm-hmm. off of herself. What the fuck? Crazy. Yeah. So if, in a way, I guess this is an indictment of the rich, perhaps. This is, uh... <laughs> it 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 is, but it's such a cartoon that I think it loses yeah. any impact. When you're you, like... don't, you don't think that uh, the rich actually uh, drink uh, poor people's blood? Yeah, that, I, I think, think that was uh, the some thing. Some of was... them definitely do. Yeah. yeah, but it's like that's the thing where it's like, okay, yeah, maybe they're enjoying watching, you know, bum fights or whatever. I remember that whole horrible craze that went on do not interact yeah 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 Yeah. exactly like that sort of stuff right but it's like these people are like no they're also literally bloodthirsty monsters yes um yeah and i mean army hammer did probably eat somebody oh well yeah army hammer is a is an absolute nightmare um a literal walking over i i don't know anything about him other than he is a nightmare so uh, yeah well that's i mean yeah. that's that's good uh yeah, there's a whole keep it that way. there's a whole documentary about him on max you can watch now so uh on what john on, on, on my cat on on uh on max yeah on, uh, over on the fine folks at max goofy's goofy Beep, son boop. <laughs> Beep, boop. oh shit there it is right on my cat's tummy <laughs> yeah, he looked up at me. He's like, "Hey, you can't watch shit on my tummy right now." <laughs> I know I'm sleeping. That, I know that's what you're thinking. Don't you do it? Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, he. Uh, th- this is where he fights uh, a character I just dubbed Leather Vest because it's his only defining quality. Yes. Yes. Um, the the thing that's great about this is we see Leather Vest kick this guy's ass, and they're like, "Oh, there's no way Lionheart's going to beat this guy." And then I do love when he does this. He catches the guy's first kick, punches him in the balls, and it's over. Over. <laughs> over. Great. Yeah. Great Very instincts. Good. Very <laughs> legit comic beat in a martial arts movie. I'm I'm on board for yeah. that. I, yeah, I love when they do this. And I, lo- I also love when it's just like everybody's yeah. like, come on, man, get up. It's like, no. <laughs> like, His nah, testicles bro. are dust. You know, He's like. <laughs> He's not having children, okay? No, yeah. There will not be little leather. There will not Van be Dam little leather bass running around. destroyed future generations of this guy's family. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and so then uh, he is the guy who says, you're so pretty, I don't know if, if I want to fight you or fuck you. And I really just yeah. want, I just want a quick Van Damme, like, what? Like, it's a, it's a, it's a weird thing to say. <laughs> okay. Right, it's still, right. I, I don't, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, because I still am trying to understand. It's like that's a, that's an insult to Van Damme. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, yeah, it's just like I mean, seems, maybe seems it's just more maybe like it's a just, compliment. Maybe it's just like a but, maybe oh. it's just like a general psych out. Like this is just gonna like he'll be lost yeah. in the fight, being like, what the? When did, why did he have to say that? That was weird <laughs> that he said that. <laughs> uh, I mean, he I sa- know he I'll says that to everybody. Yeah. my deathbed. <laughs> yeah. What did, that guy? What did why, he say? Why, why would he, he say? That? Did he want to no, fuck what do you me? Mean by I that? don't understand. Uh, he's clearly going I don't know through more some stuff. about this guy. You know, like <laughs> maybe maybe he needs to make some discoveries. <laughs> okay. uh, and Trust so immediately, the, the the rich people, which is the uh, Cynthia and Brian Thompson, who's her sort of uh, uh-huh. henchman, uh, who he, doesn't he doesn't do enough. He in doesn't this have. Movie. It, and I was I'm, about to say he doesn't have anything to do in this. And yeah. it's a bummer because Brian Thompson's great. Uh, we saw him in one, in, in one Cynthia Rothrock movie. I don't remember which one it was. 
Oh, yeah. Was it yeah. Uh, the bodyguard one? It might have been. Is that the one he's in? It might have been. He's the bad guy. In... What's the one where her brother is revealed to be the villain? Oh. I don't know. They all run to... Was that Tiger Claws? I can't remember. No, it was no, not it wasn't Tiger Claws. Oh, was that the one you... That was the one you did, right? You did yeah. Tiger yeah. Claws. It's the one... Was it Rage and Honor? It's the one Elizabeth did. I think it was Rage and Honor. That sounds right. <laughs> I don't know. Those all blurred I... together. As we talked about, Cynthia Rothrock, much like Van Damme, not a whole lot of variety between her characters. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. The, the But immediately, these these... Fighting promoters are like, oh, this is great. We're going to make a ton of money off this guy. And Van Damme's like, no, no, I just wanted to go to L.A. I really didn't want to uh, yeah. get involved in the whole uh, fighting thing. So, uh, mm-hmm. And I, uh, th- th- this where it turns into like weirdly like one of those sports movies where it's like, oh, no, the, the bad agents want to. It's like, well, we, 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 can, we, have, we do fights in L.A. You, you want to go to L.A.? That's great. You can fight people there. It's like, no, yeah. not, not really my thing. <laughs> and even Joshua is like, no. My man doesn't want to fight. <laughs> I so... do. I do love. He does have a line saying, "Like my man wants to go to L.A. <laughs> Let yeah, him. We're go. gonna go to L.A. Maybe we'll come back. I don't know. Yeah. We'll. How about we? <laughs> we'll call it. you. You know. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> so they do, and, and he does actually call her. He does. Once yeah. they get to L.A., they go to L.A. because. <laughs> uh, oh wait. Uh, this comes out of nowhere. For some reason, there's just random street thugs that come out of a truck because the movie decides yeah. it needs another fight scene. That the, was yeah, strange. Well, yeah, and they're just like, I mean, they're like, we need to find a phone. There's 15 minutes without uh, any action. <laughs> it, it really is. Like, there's some action going on over at LA. It's a, I see a cat yeah. attacking a microphone. Um, but uh, the, uh, That wasn't quite a Van Damme kick, but... It was getting there, though. It's pretty close. Yeah. Keep working on it. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, there's just a scene where it's like, we need to find a phone. And then on cue, this guy and like, his six hands were just like, somebody yeah. say they need to find a phone? <laughs> Pay me. Yeah. And Van Damme is even like, okay, yeah, yeah how I much have do you want for your phone? Pocket. You want some? And no, and then he and Joshua proceed to beat the shit out of these guys, including Joshua finally wrapping a phone cord around this one guy's neck and then making I... his call. Did he kill that man? No. Uh, yeah, I don't think no. so. But it was it was no. uh, 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 he was the... getting ready to though. Definitely, you know? definitely was... a don't say I'm conscious for too long. It's super bad for you moment. But I don't <laughs> yeah. think he died. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I just thought that's so weird. And of course, you do get one of the great things where all the guys get beat up, and then there's one last guy who's like, "Nah, man, he runs away." That guy's He's the best. like, "Next time, <laughs> catch you next time." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going to get more guys. Okay, the craziest thing in this movie is, so Van Damme gets to the hospital, and oh no, it's too late. His brother has died. Um, Yes. And so Van Damme is all guilty about it. And then he asks the doctor, he goes, did they arrest the men who did it? And he's just like, yeah. I thought, oh, stupid me. I thought maybe he was going to go get revenge on them. Nope, that is never part of the plot. It's just... This is not a vengeance film. <laughs> it's this so is not... crazy. Yeah. For, to... Yeah, I kind of like that, actually. I, I, I kind, kind of, of I kind of like that, except for they set up they they have his brother die in this spectacularly violent manner. Right. This like yes. why like, kill yes. him that you're way? You're almost expecting you're almost expecting this fighting ring to end up having something to do with it too. Yes. yes. That's yes. that's what you're waiting for because otherwise just just have his brother die. Right? Yeah. Yes. Like yes. if that's if that's what the movie's about, then just just let that happen. Don't uh, you don't need to add a whole like uh, uh, once again subplot it's, of him. Well, cause like the movie literally so opens memorable. with his brother getting lit on fire. Yeah, like, lit so, on like, fire yeah. by these drug dealers or whatever. By a guy who gets like a one liner yeah. too. We're going like, oh, that guy's like a villain. I can't wait to see never Van Damme kick this guy. No, nope. it's so nope. never seen again. Yeah, it's it's really strange. It's really it's wild. Strange. Yes. Um. So. Uh. Yeah. So he. <laughs> they go to L.A. Everything is so perfectly timed in this movie because he then he's like, oh, I, f- I need to go see my sister in law and my niece. Oh, I meet my cute niece and what's this? The landlord is yelling at her about bills that aren't paid. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh man, this mm-hmm. is this is pr-. and of course the landlord has to be just a massive piece of shit 
for one. Well, because all landlords are. Well, yeah. (laughs) If you own property, (laughs) no thanks. Uh, (laughs) But he's he's once again classic stereotype. Just like if I if I don't get your rent, you and your daughter gonna be out of here. It's L.A., but for some reason, I'm still from New York. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite thing about Columbo. <laughs> yes, everybody is, is he's an LA detective who is the most New York man in the history of television. <laughs> yeah, pretty great. Yeah, it's right. Well, yeah. I can't remember. Is there there's some line about he used to be a New York cop, I think. I don't remember. I think there's some one off thing about hey, back when I was in New York. New Something York, like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't uh, matter. Um so yeah, the uh, he's like, oh no, my family needs money, and this is where, yeah, the 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 sister in law is like, it's, and I really don't understand her reason. Is like, it's your fault because you got him into crime, but then you left and he stayed in crime. It's like, still sounds like he made bad decisions. And once again, we know yeah. basically nothing about him beyond he got lit on fire at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> yeah, and it it's, I mean, but, but that's what we say. I love this movie, but like. This script is, oh. is very oh, oh. thin. <laughs> it's very thin and all over the place. Like, they, again, yeah. they could have focused on any of these aspects to make an entire movie, yeah. but they they just kind of threw everything at the wall. And yeah, it's sort of like, it's like, it's like, well, do you need the family and Joshua to be part of this whole thing? Not really. No, just yeah, like, it's, yeah, really. there's, I mean, I don't, I don't dislike any of it, and like I said, I think the movie actually is, is paced better than a lot of these but it is like there's just a lot of stuff going on and like like if it was just the niece or just the Mm sister-in-law like that might be well it just might maybe there's one too many family members like if it was if it was just him and joshua trying to like get the the niece like because she's in foster like a bad foster care situation go. or and something and that's that's mm-hmm. very classic like boxing movie yeah i'm a single dad i gotta fight mm-hmm. yeah that that is that would probably streamline things a little bit because yeah the because they don't which i'm glad I, i'm both glad they don't do the romance with the mother but it also kind of makes her a non-important presence in the movie yeah other yeah. than she realizes <laughs> like everyone that JCVD is the greatest human being on the planet. <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. Um, and so, yeah, yeah uh, <laughs> how did he not... So he needs a place to stay. Joshua goes, oh, I know mm-hmm. somebody with a fancy place uh, that she mm-hmm. that she's not using right now. It's like, <clears throat> Jean-Claude Van Damme, how do you not realize where you're going? He forgot Cynthia existed the minute he walked. she walked out of his line, direct line of sight. He just he did not, not care about her that much. <laughs> And then you want to talk about a power move when he wakes up to her on the goddamn like bow flex or whatever she's doing. The it's just like yeah, this is this is what'll get him. He's clearly a man who likes exercise. This is gonna turn him on. How long was she exercising before he woke up? (laughs) Did she try to time it so that? (laughs) It's like it's like she was she was ready with the bar and was just kind of looking back at. Oh, he seems to be stirring. Mm, yeah. Oh, one. I gotta make thousand. sure that I'm dewy, but yeah. not too sweaty. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she is such a weird character, and once again, I yeah, applaud this strange. actress for going for mm-hmm. it. There mm-hmm. is no attempt mm-hmm. to be likable in the least. This woman is despicable. <laughs> I it. do love that Jean Claude Van Damme is like. I don't know. Maybe I can rescue her, uh, as you mentioned, but. She shows no, like, there's not well, even any That's the thing about it is, why does he ever. even think that? She's so clearly no. pure evil. Um, She's just trying to take advantage of him, like, in every possible way. This, that's all. This woman is I, most famous for being on Dallas. No. Oh. She was one of the main characters on Dallas for 186 episodes, plus Jesus. all the reunion movies. So, Yeah. So she she was a name of sorts probably in this then. Uh, yeah. I, I don't recognize her because I can say, even as much as my love of classic TV, the classic soap operas don't. That's not my thing. If she was on an old yeah. detective show, maybe. Um, yeah. She did. She is in one episode of Freddy's Nightmares, though. Everyone remember, <laughs> everyone remember nice. the, the, the uh, yeah, the Nightmare on Elm Street anthology show? Yeah. Very weird oh. show. 
Yeah, Wait, it was like when did this come out? Uh, 1989. Uh, okay. It was uh, yeah, at the height of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street fever, um, because Freddy was everywhere for a while there. Yeah. And it was it was just sort of like cheap. Freddy got fingered. You know, <laughs> he's great in that. The weirdest sequel, I thought. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had to. Uh, no, the 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 uh, the thing about it, it was it was basically just like cheap horror Twilight Zone with freddy okay. krueger as your rod serling it really didn't the oh. first episode is kind of interesting because it is his origin story oh, okay you actually see like the story of the town banding together and burning him and stuff so that one's kind of interesting mm-hmm. the rest of them are you know whatever but hey robert england gotta get paid man yeah mm-hmm. exactly um so yeah she's she and she was uh that she's the ex-wife of uh, filmmaker paul haggis who went on to win the Oscar for Crash? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is not great. Uh, so when they divorced, uh, Paul Haggis is one of the most uh, famously outspoken former Scientologists. Uh, apparently, oh, that their divorce was she is still currently a Scientologist, and a lot of that had to do boy. with that. Uh, right. Husband Paul Faggus revealed that when he quit Scientology in 2009, Deborah was forced by the organization to disconnect. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so that led to their. He's like, I'm out. She, so, all right, not great. You know, uh, whatever. Yeah. Or but... Shelly. <laughs> Where did you put Shelly? Just as much as we get that out there. Uh, yeah, so now he needs. He needs the money, so he goes and oh yeah, you, we we already talked about their fashion montage and her weird. Yeah. The, the only thing I want to bring up about the scene is is yes, he she, her clothes are burned and he's naked in bed and he's doing this like well, I don't want to get up and she's like you're gonna have to get up, I'm gonna have to. There's no way you can get out of that bed without me seeing everything. Weird oh, vibe, yeah. very uncomfortable. Yeah, the vibes yeah. are bad. <laughs> <laughs> the, the vibes are bad. But here's the thing. I can't tell what the movie wants me to think because, once again, Sexy Sax is playing. This mm-hmm. movie is presumably aimed at a mostly heterosexual male crowd. She is an attractive woman. Are we supposed to think this is hot? Really getting a I lot think... of mixed messages from this film. Yeah. I think this movie, I think the sax is in response to Van Damme. Like honestly, yeah, yeah, I think he's the sex appeal. Uh, and also, this is the scene where we get the bun shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. Very weird. And then, yeah, she yeah. takes him shopping, and then just barrels into the dressing room and like grabs his dick. Yep. And then, yeah. Oh boy, my least favorite character in the movie: snarky gay salesman. Oh boy. There's a quick like, <laughs> is everything okay in there? Yeah, <laughs> guy who just wandered out of a sitcom. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow, John, really? You made me watch this during Pride Month. I know. I know. <laughs> oh no. Uh oh. Oh no. We did a goof. That's we, it. We that it. well, that's it. That's it for this show. <laughs> you know, for the second time tonight, I think that's that's gonna be a wrap for the show. Yeah, that's uh, it for this. We got. <laughs> yeah. I'm on fire today. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren Freeman plays salesman, and oh, I am not surprised at all. So many sitcom appearances. I can only, yeah. only assume he's in an episode of Saved by, Be- by the Bell as a character named Ramon Ramon. I'm sure that is oh. a very sensitive portrayal. I'm yeah, sure. and I'm sure <laughs> Zach Morris ruins his life. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just looking at his roles is like irate customer. He literally was on <laughs> I don't know what the sitcom All Right already was, but he actually did just play a character only credited as gay man. Oh. <laughs> nice. Yeah, nice. This, this nice, is nice, his nice, one. Nice. <laughs> this is his one. This, this is his defi- Yeah, a lot of desk clerks. I think this energy is everything he did. Yeah. Yes. Can Which, I like, help I mean, you? You got to get paid. Yeah, no, I, I mean I I and Man, at this time, the amount of sitcoms and stuff I watched just flew right by me, right? It was just like, as far as I knew, every gay person was exactly like this. Yeah. Right, yeah. You know, it was a different time. I mean, I guess that's the... We always bring that up on the show. The and we o- are. No. Um, the, the, only, the only thing 
the only positive that comes from this is I go like, this would not be okay now. So I guess I can look right. at that as the good thing about it. It's like the fact that I'm going, Oosh, is a, it means culture's on a somewhat better trajectory, broadly speaking. Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so he immediately, yeah, uh, let's talk about the um, the Scotsman. And this, this, this yes, is please the, at the I warehouse think, think roller is, mm, with the with the fucking twinks in the roller blades. I like, are you kidding about me? About them, I and, for, and every was that the, supposed to be intimidating? Are roller skates intimidating, John? Is that <laughs> well? And the also, vibe I'm I, to be I guess so. I don't know, these people are on wheels. <laughs> like, it's pretty scary. And it's just it's they could have so easily been like cocktail waitresses in roller blades, but no, it was a bunch of fucking twinks. I know it's a, it's <laughs> literal. It just adds to there are so many. This movie is so generic, but there's so many like weirdly specific things in it like that where you're like, yeah, wait, what? Because not everybody's in roller skates. It's just well, it's all the spect some... all the spectators are in cars. In cars, and the yes. cars become the fight ring. I this is what I mean. Like they went out, they came out swinging with these fights. Yeah, and this yeah. is the best one. This and is they the best really fight. Really should not have started with it. And the and, and then of course yeah. you get the once again the very sensitive line of Joshua going, "This man is wearing a dress." And but yep. then it's I love. Like, come on, man. Even in 1990, Van Dan was going, uh, he's a Scotsman, it's a kilt. Like, I don't, I, it's almost just like, how do you not know that? <laughs> I know, I know Braveheart hasn't come out yet, but uh, still, man. Uh. Yeah, Joshua says he's been everywhere, but apparently Scotland Except is not Scotland. Not, oh, yeah. you're right. That's yeah. the one place I haven't been. Damn. <laughs> I didn't know. Thanks for teaching I me. <laughs> I saw you know, a sequel. Yeah, this movie. Going next. <laughs> well, apparently there was. Oh, that would have been great. The rematch with this guy in Scotland as the sequel. Yeah. yeah. But yes, I love this fight. Also, Jean Claude Van Damme is wearing a kilt. Oh yeah, he yeah. has to because it, it, much like the end of Kickboxer, where Respect. they did, where they did not deliver on the idea of we have to fight the ancient way. They do actually mm-hmm. have to do that. They're out in the Highlands fighting in kilts. Oh no, I'm mad. This movie yes. doesn't exist. We're gonna come yeah. up. With, we're gonna come up with a sequel later to this movie, but um, I think we. I think I think we, just, we I think and we regardless just, of the title, it's yeah. gonna be Van Damme in a kilt, yep. baby. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, so he fights this guy. Uh, I love this because once again, yeah, they're fighting. The cars make the ring, so they're falling onto the hoods of these cars. And then at it one just, point, the Scotsman rips the antenna off of a car and starts trying to strangle JCVD with it, because it as they've established, there are no rules. Yeah. yeah, there are no rules, so I guess death could happen. Death. That's the. Uh, I said that's the thing I couldn't fully figure out. Is like, is death supposed to happen, or is it just it could happen? Because well, se- if death is required, John, that would be a rule. So <laughs> yeah. therefore, uh, there, then there. Were, <laughs> this is true because it does seem like <laughs> everybody else is trying to like kill Van Damme. Van Damme seems to be the only yeah. person well, not trying to kill his opponent. Yeah because they're they're fighting they're not fighting for anyone you know what i mean right. they're just like i'm fighting so that i have an excuse to kill someone and get away with because it they, and they, jean-claude van damme <laughs> is fighting for his family they establish yeah. that when they start setting up attila later in the movie that like oh this guy mm-hmm. has been dropping bodies everywhere and yeah. he's this dude just loves to kill He's sadistic yeah. because he purposely starts losing the fight early on to give his opponents false hope that's all oh, that's twisted man he really didn't play that up but i feel like the period of time where van damme thought he was winning was so short and so much more of the movie is van damme getting the shit kicked uh, <laughs> yeah yeah i so. kind of thought maybe it was because like at like at one point attila realizes like like when he gets when van damme like kicks him into the crowd and attila's like okay mm. actually i gotta uh, this guy might actually it's be true. good at fighting the look on his face i'm gonna was get my ass like, kicked very start authentically being a right exactly yeah because the look on his face in, in that moment is very like like pure nobody anger. makes me bleed my own blood it's it's, it's, exactly, it's exactly that energy yeah absolutely <laughs> Um, it's true. So he beats that. this guy, 
And I love the moment when he's when the guy's like mostly unconscious and pouring blood, and Van Damme is just holding him up in front of the car with Cynthia in it, like, mm-hmm. look what I fucking did. And you can just hear Josh going, "Let him go, man. <laughs> he's had enough. Good lord." And then he and then he holds him up in front of the Scots to like, "Hey, yeah. do you want me to kill your boy or yeah. like, like what are we doing here?" <laughs> Live or die, man. I always go back to the end of Karate Kid Part Two. Live or die, man. Uh, and because all these movies end up in that place where our hero has the killing yeah. blow, but won't do it because they're too good. Of course. Um, yeah. I believe uh, I believe a little film called Kickboxer ended that way too. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else ended that way? Cyborg. Uh, a little cyborg. Yeah, as we all remember. Uh, uh, I was going to say a little animated show called Last Airbender. Sure. Ends that way as well. Yeah. I mean. I, I think th- we go on with this forever because there's like 800 martial arts things that end that way. It's always yeah. killing people. A is... little film called Tiger Claws. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's which true. It's great because it opens up uh, room for a sequel, which, yeah. which happens. Mm-hmm. There's at least yeah. two Tiger Claw sequels, aren't there? There's at least yeah. two yes. and three. Um, yeah. I think we might be getting to those at some point, too. Uh, but uh, yeah, so he beats that guy. Then he, then we get to the less exciting uh, guy with fight. mullet and grills, who they they appear oh, wait, to be no, no. they appear to be fighting. This is the racket. This is the racquetball court fight. Yes, that's right. what I was gonna say. Okay, okay. They fight in a racket. What the? I will say though, more fitting for rich people though to be watching a fight in a racquetball. It's court. true. Yes, this did make sense. But it all is just to set up Van Damme beats this guy by kicking him through the glass. Of course, yeah, yeah. pretty nice, yeah. like that. Pretty good. Like this movie hits on a couple levels. Got a guy on fire and a guy going through glass. Uh, that's about mm-hmm. all I need out of these movies. Pretty good. Uh, yeah. And then in the meantime, he's been giving his because the sister in law wants nothing to do with him. He has to give her the money he's been winning in secret. And so he mm-hmm. <laughs> he has Joshua pretend to be an insurance agent and makes up mm-hmm. this phony story about how his brother had set up an insurance thing without anybody's knowledge and they're going to get paid out mo- which come on lady it's you're getting good paid thing she never looked into it yeah, yeah like uh... listen grief is a hell of a drug <laughs> but just the idea is like yeah you're going to continue to get monthly payments for the foreseeable future like what insurance pays out like that and probably consider like a considerable amount of money based on what yeah, they seem like it and yeah. get that little girl the bike she wants it's, it's just very heartwarming. It's just it is, and I will. What I like is when I, as always, I read through a lot of the user reviews for this, and there's a lot of guys who are like, I don't know, some of it's pretty cheesy. I didn't like all that schmaltz and stuff. I like the kicking, but then like it tried to make me feel, and I n- nobody. It made me well think feelings. about my. It made me think about my stepdaughter and how much she means to me, and I hated that. God damn. It. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Made me think about how I don't have custody of my kids anymore. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> and how, now I can't drink Bud Light now. I got nothing left. I got nothing left. <laughs> damn you, Van Damme. Just, just, <laughs> God damn you, God damn <laughs> it is, It's very schmaltz, but it's like it's totally the, the direction I want this movie to go. Like the heartwarming yes. stuff. Like, if there's nothing subtle in this movie. No heartwarming thing is subtle. No fight is subtle. No, no sexual harassment is subtle. Uh, it's just no. everything is in your face in this movie. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, then you get the uh, you get the uh, the fight in the pool, which, once again, the guy is trying to drown Van Damme in the pool. Yep. Mm-hmm. But Van yep. Damme, and Van Damme boy. specifically leaves him face up in the, in the water. Yeah, because he's yeah. a good boy. Um, he's a good boy. <laughs> Uh, he does finish him with an elbow, which I appreciated because you, yeah. you know, yeah. we're so used to fists and feet. I like that he dropped him with an elbow. Um, elbows and l- weird energy at this. This also is, is like the rich person pool party, and it's very much 1990. And with these bathing suits, oh mm-hmm. man, oh, lots boy. of neon yeah. day glow. Oh boy, yeah, and those yeah. high cut pants. Man. High cut. Yeah, yep. that's what we wanted. A lot of thigh. All the way up. Uh, <laughs> uh, so much thigh, we're getting into abdomen territory. <laughs> and then, <laughs> is this still thigh? I don't even know. Keep going, though. I think I can see a rib. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I ain't complaining. Uh, 
I don't know what I'm looking at, but I like it. <laughs> and then, okay, I, I had forgotten about the scene until right now. One of the weirdest scenes is jealous Cynthia confronting Joshua about, yeah, I see this woman is cashing right. his checks. Is he fucking her? Yeah, the Joshua's scene. like, why are you like this? <laughs> Why you gotta be like you were Cynthia? crazy? You're fully crazy. Because he, it, it was like I just wanted to, I wanted to be like, cause he's mine. All right, you hear me? Weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Oh, we didn't mention earlier actually okay. another moment in this. Well, uh, when he agrees to do the fight, he goes, "Fine, I'll do it." She goes, "Really?" He goes, "I mean the fighting, please." Yeah, She's like. like <laughs> uh, oh, and don't like, be, oh. don't make this weird. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she tries to spin this into like she has dialogue here where she goes, "I just don't want him to be focused on anything they take away from the fight." And it's like, mm, yeah, but this is like jealousy. that's definitely not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fully like possessiveness. And it's around this know. time that she goes, "I need to find a fighter who can kill him." Because <laughs> it's pretty quickly <laughs> after this. Because if I can't, if I murder. can't have him, no one can. Yeah, I didn't realize how similar to Fatal Attraction this, this movie is. <laughs> It's got similar energy. Um, I won't just be ignored, Lionheart. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, she gives him the name Lionheart, right? She does. That was the first yes. fight. Joshua did. names him Lo- Lion, and then I love that his nickname. Mm-hmm. Uh, he gets Lion, and then he gets. Lionheart, it's very comic right? booky, which I enjoyed. It's very superhero kind of like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's very similar to Bruce Campbell going, The Amazing Spider Man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bruce Campbell should have been in this. Well, Bruce, it, it. I believe a, an across the board note for any movie is Bruce Campbell should be in it. But um, yes. there yeah, is no absolutely. film that wouldn't be improved by his presence. Uh, yeah, that's true. So, uh, yeah, the, the yeah, this is when they, they, they get the tape of Attila, <laughs> which is great because. Like anytime you get tapes or security footage in movies, it has like punch ins for close ups. So you're like, wait a minute, who was filming this <laughs> underground fight who with like edited multi- this? <laughs> multiple yeah, cameras multiple and yeah, and they were just like, uh, and his his distinct look are his crazy sideburns. Yeah. He, he has crazy mutton sideburns, chop looking ass. A very long ponytail, yeah. and he carries around a cat. These are the things we know about. Um, and uh, this guy is played by Abdel Kisi. He's a he's a big dude. Uh, well, that, but he is the brother. He is the brother of Mikel Kisi, who is the bad guy from Kickboxer and is in mm-hmm. this movie. Um, right. So they're both friends right. of Van Damme's. This is uh, yeah. Okay. I said Ab- Abdel Kisi. Uh, we uh, he he will go on to also be in the Quest, which is still one we have to do. The only movie Van Damme has directed. Um, okay. I still want to cover that at some point. We have talked about doing a month of actors directing themselves in action movies. Oh, yes. Uh, and the quest, I have seen it, uh, and it is nuts. Um, it's just like, what if is... Bloodsport but crazier? Okay. I was. It, it, quest has a fantasy vibe to me. I was going to ask if it was like a double genre film. No. But... Oh, I would love that. I would. I. That's. I, I'm trying to think. Is he? He hasn't really ever done like other. He's done some sci-fi. But I don't think he's ever done, like, fantasy, really, which I would love to see. Because we, of course, still yeah. we still talk about Hellbound, the one fantasy Chuck Norris movie where he fought the devil. And uh, that's, oh, still, right. oh. that's still one of the high Gosh. points of the whole have show. You guys, have you guys watched uh, In the Name of the King 3? Is that the one that Dolph is in? We, I think, yes. I think it is 3. Uh, we have not we done have any not. of the In the Name of the King movies yet. That is oncoming i think that'll make a video game okay. month at some point too do we start with the first in the name of the king we, are, we have also we talked about doing straight to three i'm not i'm not sure how interconnected they really are i mean the yeah, first one very i've i've only ever seen the first one because that was yeah sort of a movie that's statham yeah that's the thing i was gonna say is, that has statham, more li- yeah. it's statham it has burt reynolds as a medieval king which mm-hmm. is one of my favorite things <laughs> in the king world burt reynolds yeah where it's just king. like yeah i'm the uh King of this kingdom here. Hey, how you doing? Uh, yeah, like, going, like, and you've never seen a man who doesn't fit on a horse more than him. He's just like, yeah, they uh, they put me up on this horse. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> they had a timing to it because it kept falling off. Isn't he also Jason Statham's father or something in that too? You're like, yes. In, in, yes. in what world? <laughs> we did. And yeah, Ray Liotta is a dark wizard. Yes. If I'm not mistaken. 
Yeah, yes. maybe we. Which but anyway, yeah, we we should do that. Uh, we are doing it. I think we're doing a time traveling uh, Dolph movie at some point here. Uh, okay. Dolph is Dolph is. Is there his... another one? Because that's in the name of the King Three. <laughs> oh no! Then there's another one. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Dolph, here's the thing. One thing this show has taught me, and we will get back to Lionheart, but one thing this show has taught me, and listen, we've both learned this, Dolph is in way more movies than you even thought. Dolph is yeah, in so, so many a, so many movies. Where there's we, actors who you expect to be in everything, like uh, Trejo, Trejo and Eric Roberts. Yeah, we uh, just assume but, they'll be in anything we watch. But, but yeah, Dolph has shown up in so many movies we weren't expecting him to we've show We've had to in. actually, uh, like consciously look for movies without him because there's been too much Dolph on this show. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> we keep we keep adding movies for other reasons and then going, wait, is Dolph in this? <laughs> I can, God, damn wait, it, get out. This guy... Dolph Lundgren, what are you doing and here? He's, he, we'll, we'll, we'll need to... We've done two of the movies he's directed, but he's directed five or six movies, Dolph. Right. Uh, wow. that, yeah, that we still... Uh, one was better than the other, is what I will say about the ones we watched of those. But yeah, yeah we will have to do the quest at some point, uh, which is Van Damme's directorial effort, and it stars him and James Bond actor Roger Moore. Ooh, Whoa. yeah, yeah, not doing cool. martial arts. <laughs> He's oh, that's you don't such say. a damn shame. Yeah, yeah. well. <laughs> He, he was he so very old? Bond was he very old at that point? He's pretty old, but even when he was young and in the Bond movies, it was mostly stunt. <laughs> I think yeah. he he is widely known pretty amongst obvious. Bond fans as using his stunt double more than any of them. It's yeah. like it's like if it's anything beyond a brisk walk, Larry's doing it. It's not gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> it it ain't gonna it's be. It's n- it's not for the saint. <laughs> 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 I didn't know you could just summon that halo in real life. Uh, yep, it's actually a thing I can do. It's a thing I can do. It's on my. It's under special skills on my resume. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how do you think I got the pot? Um, so. I love Roger Moore. I love uh, Roger Moore. There's a Roger Moore action figure yeah. right behind me, of course, as they're always. Oh yeah. Um, there he is. Yeah. Yeah, because he is. Uh, I don't care what anyone says. He's. He is my. He is my favorite Bond. That is not to say mm. I, I understand when you get into objectives, he's not the best Bond, but he is my personal mm. favorite Bond. Uh, gotcha. So uh, mine is mine is George Lazenby. <laughs> one and done, baby. He he nailed yeah. it on his one out and didn't even need he left it all in the field. It's so good. He's like, I, what more is there to say uh, about? The game? I have a question. I don't fully understand the introduction of these Euro trash bad guys, who are. Uh, they're betting they're they're gamblers of some sort right yeah they're like sure. high rollers they're they're yes. yeah they're the they're the whales if you will of like uh yeah and <laughs> cynthia's gonna gonna dupe them right with her highly doctored footage of attila right that's the thing yeah and then because and, and, they're <laughs> and they, they they bring van damme in you talk about once i'm being the ingenue they basically go they they bring him in to basically go like yeah, let's take a look. Do a little spin for us. Ooh, I yeah. like what I'm seeing. That's it. Yeah. Uh, He's just going with it. I don't understand. He's uh, just being objectified at every point in this movie. I do like his one-liner here, though, where they go, "They everyone is telling us Attila will wipe the floor with you. And he goes, anything is possible. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, so who knows? God He's damn, so, I like this so guy. He's so humble. Uh, and then and... It, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and, like, right throughout this, between the fights and between, like, the heartwarming scenes with Nicole, like, we have the French Legionnaire uh, yeah, Black they're... Ops agents who are, like, keeping an eye on they're Helene's s- They're sniffing around and... the movie, yeah. Right, like, And that's... at this point, right, they confront Van Damme because they actually see him because, like... He's yes. been taking jogs by the apartment, and they finally actually see him because they're they're the best. Well, yeah, because he stops to see Ashley Johnson on her new bike, and he's like, "Oh, so cute! Damn, my cover is blown." Yeah. <laughs> Immediately. Yeah, and so they they. Yeah. Uh, and then he then he just beats him up in an alley, and it's fine. He it's well, fine. they almost beat him up until. Uh, Brian Russell Thompson. saves yeah. the day. This is when I thought, oh wait, are they gonna end up? That would have been interesting if, if it's just like, no man, I'm with you. I hate her too. Or I thought he was gonna be the one to go. She's setting you up, man. 
No, that yeah. would have instead this character actually I have no idea what this char- what happens to this character at the end of this movie. He gets yeah. punched out during Van- when Van Damme is it's does. actually it's the same beat as Kickboxer. He's kicking the guy he's fighting and then he does kick Brian Thompson once. Which is this... right. Yes, that is exactly beat for beat the same. Oh my God, John, these are the same fucking. It's movies. the same movie. I'm telling you, uh, <laughs> oh Sheldon God, Lettich Jesus and and, and J C V D were like, yeah, Kickboxer didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. So yeah, this is this is their second is, draft. Let's take a second pass why, at it. Yeah, this is why I have trouble remembering which movies are which. Because because the, uh, it doesn't matter. Seen, because <laughs> we've seen the same movie like 400 times now. <laughs> Like, it's been the exact same film I think, every single week. I, I think what I've come to realize over the three years we've been doing this show is uh, there are only five action plots. <laughs> I mean, like, we, yes. have, we have seen the yeah. same five movies. It's like, it's either like, Guy's family is wiped out, he seeks vengeance. It is the mm-hmm. underground fighting tournament, and Guy's got a personal stake in it. So, right? Like, there's, you know, the, there's the former special forces guy who somebody pisses off. Um, yeah. and, and just yeah. very, it's just all variations on that, but essentially structurally, they're all the same. That's why it's fun. That's one of the reasons we try it. We're trying to do more things like Spooktober and stuff like that, where we can get out of the, um, and we've got, mold, we've got some yeah. stuff cooked up for October. I'll tell you that right now. There's some Ooh. weird stuff honestly, coming your way. Honestly, October is one of my favorite months. It is. We're also I doing, I don't know if we, have we revealed on here, we're also doing sci-fi September before that too. Which should be uh, very I interesting. Have, yeah. Uh, and speaking excited. of, I'll just give this a little to you. Speaking of now, two and we do have a Jason Priestley movie for that. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh boy. If you want to see Jason Priestley in a time travel movie, um, <laughs> those sideburns. I'm moving in with my brother soon, and I cannot wait to make him watch some of these movies with me. <laughs> yes. Yes. That is most of the show is about making people watch these things. So. Uh, Mm-hmm. It's, um, it's spreading the suffering. Uh, so yeah, yeah. so, so he, he 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 yeah. Van Dam tells Joshua because we're going into the final fight now. Which um, the 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 thing this movie does have that Kickboxer also has too is what a killer song that he comes into this for. Right. Oh, I love this song. Is it No Mercy? Is what it's called? Yeah. Oh, yeah. it is gold, man. It's 1990, but but the the spirit of the 80s is still firmly alive with this thing. Uh, yeah, and the, the what I love hadn't quite died at this point. What I love about this yeah. is, unlike Kickboxer, has an amazing soundtrack wall to wall. This this is like mm. the only needle drop in the movie, and it's a total banger. Yes. Um, yes. No mercy plays as he walks in, and he does say he wants to get his family out of their terrible neighborhood, their crime ridden mm-hmm. neighborhood. Uh, so he has bet all the money in my bank account on me. That's how much or this guy believes in himself. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If if we could all just be uh, this character. Lionheart. Right? Character's name. Yeah, Lionheart. Just, just, Leon. Uh, Leon Gaultier. Leon Gaultier. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and so, yeah. So it's a uh, No Mercy song going to the final fight. And I do love the, <laughs> the thing where... They have Joshua going like, oh, man, who do I put my money on? Do I believe in my best friend or is he going to fail? I just don't know. Uh, yeah. And, of course, Cynthia. Yeah. And that dilemma lasts five seconds. Of course it does. Because Cynthia is the one who is bet against him. And, uh, of course, the fight plays. Wrong (laughs) bet. Wrong bet. (laughs) Uh, hey, that could be the name of the movie. <laughs> it shouldn't, but... Yeah. No, no, because, once again, if I saw the... I said wrong bit, I'd be like, that's a weird... What is this movie about? Even Lionheart is <laughs> weird, but at a least... Negative, a negative wor- starting word for a title? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, that's... Oh, I will no. say, yeah, put... Uh, talk to the make... Well, I guess don't talk, because there are, like, eight wrong turn movies, so... Um... Yeah, and they're all great. You're right, John. They're so great. They're, they're the best movies. They are the best movies. And uh, I have talked about, we, we we already are planning for the future where we're out of monster movies and it becomes Campbell and Jones meet the slashers. So believe me, I've looked into how many wrong turn movies there are. Um, I would love to watch the wrong turn movies and talk about them with you're, y'all. You are welcome to, because I guarantee you there's not going to be a lot of fight to do those. Um <laughs> Also, how many Joyride movies there are, too. Dear, oh, yeah. dear God. Um, there are so many. That was what I learned from that. 
just like just like yeah. Dolph Lundgren movies. They're just more than you think. Um, yeah. So yeah, the fight plays out pretty be. much exactly like they said it would. Van Damme's landing mm-hmm. a lot of early shots, but we as Nani's going, oh no, this is what they said would happen. And yeah. uh, one thing we forgot to mention is in the pool fight, he got uh, his ribs cracked. That's so right. So he's also oh, dealing with yes. with a, a, a sl- an injury. Because that also is great mm. Joshua dialogue, too. He goes, you're going to go out there and fight when you're fucked up. Then you're going to end up all fucked up for your life like I am. Because he has right, a and whole- this is where we. This is where we get the reveal that he also used to be one of Cynthia's fighters, and she fucked mm-hmm. him over like this. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And so he is... He's he's all fucked up, like he says, from that. And so it's just like, I've been down this road, man. Because before the fight, he's like, we got to get out of here. You know, this is... Wouldn't, uh, wouldn't let... it have been great if, if this conversation happened a little bit earlier? You know, like <laughs> yeah. Just a little, like just like yeah. A just a little bit. Earlier, I do, know? as with a lot of these movies, get the sense they were just writing scene to scene and never went back. Uh, yes. <laughs> it was just like, ooh, how about this? And just was like, N- should we set that up earlier? Uh, don't worry about uh, it. No, no, no. Um, Where so should the next fight be? We're taking a... a to write your suggestion on this little slip of paper and put it in this hat and then we'll pick. <laughs> That does feel how it was written. Um, yes. So then he starts getting just destroyed in the fight. And he get, mm-hmm. he he gets knocked down, knocked down again, punched when he's already on the ground, because there are no rules. Mm-hmm. And there this is, no rules. once again, yeah. Joshua's like, you got to give up, man. He's going to fuck you up. He's going to fucking kill you. He's going <laughs> to fucking kill you. But then, wouldn't you know it, when he gets back up, the audience starts cheering for him. Mm. Just like a Rocky mm. movie, man. I mean, that's the other thing, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This and Kickbox are also just more higher stakes Rocky films. Because, like, death really yeah. isn't generally on the line, except unless, of course, you're Rocky IV. Um, yeah. uh, R.I.P. to Apollo Creed. Uh, mm. Man, still bums me out. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so he gets up. And, of course, <laughs> it's it's even kind of the same as Kickboxer. Once again, that might as well be the the just the whole episode is my pretty much the kickboxer. <laughs> kickboxer redux. He realizes, oh wait, <laughs> I should just kick this guy because he kind of <laughs> hasn't been throwing Look a lot of kicks. Makes. Yeah, but his kicks yeah. are, and he just starts wailing on him. I mean, just mm-hmm. fucking he makes the decision to win. And- yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna see a Van Damme movie that doesn't end like that, where he just goes, oh wait, I'll just win the fight then. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, forgot. To... Of course. Oh, I should... you. Oh, How could I forget yeah. to win the fight? And so yeah, he, he kicks him a, a million times. Then once he's, <laughs> well, I guess once his legs are too tired, then he just starts pummeling him with punches. Mm-hmm. But then of course has the final kill shot ready to go and looks over at Cynthia and doesn't do it. Yeah. And then the implication is she is trying to run out on her bet? I think yes. so, yes. She bet money she didn't have with her. Yeah. Because uh, she assumed she was going to. So I assume uh, she is then murdered by organized crime, right? I think that was heavily implied, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you, he- the last you see of her, she's trying to go Just like... Just like the end of Sing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'll i take your word for that. I can't say I've seen Sing, unfortunately. Um, it is heavily implied that uh, Seth MacFarlane's mouse character gets murdered by organized crime wow. bears. Wow. And they do not follow up on it. <laughs> wow. That's darker yeah, than I would have expected. Uh, yeah. That'll be coming up later on the action shot. Maybe. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you know, it's more of an action movie than than you would think. Um, <laughs> yeah, <true>. exactly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, and 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 even yeah, even we saw even the French guys who were there to collect him were cheering for him, and they're the ones yeah. who pick him up, going like, "Come on, man! You, I I know you just got your ass handed to you, but uh, yeah, you, you gotta go back. We gotta go. You gotta go back. Yeah." And they're literally dragging him out of, and then. This really made me laugh when it's knock, knock, knock at the door for the sister-in-law and it's Van Damme still covered in blood from the fight. It just looks like shit. <laughs> probably concussed, like just, yeah. I'm here, I made it home. Lips probably broken at this point. <sighs> yeah, I want her to go like, Spitting maybe, out teeth. <laughs> maybe you should have gone to the hospital first. I don't, yeah. No, yes. I have to or- tell you this gone to the hospital or cleaned yourself up a little bit you yeah know? because he's he, no, he, we went sh- the legionnaire guys brought him straight from the fight 
Well, I also love yeah. the Legion. I mean, is the other implication is the Legionnaire guys were probably just going to bring him straight from the fight right onto a plane back to France. You think? <laughs> but they. Uh, I think. Okay. Well, One yeah, stop. I guess France. Because I was going to say he was stationed in North Africa. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. This is true. Yes. I don't. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if he was going back to headquarters though or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good uh, unclear because they let him go. Spoiler: They let him go. Yeah. I don't actually know why they even like. Why they, they put him in the car? Him. Why it they? Yeah, because because it's like I mean they've clearly already the answer made up is him. the answer is so he can run back and you know grab Ashley Johnson and sweep her up into a big hug. Like that's the and reason. Keep why. in mind but he is still narrative wise. All the no stuff reason. we're describing: getting out of the car, running, picking up his niece. He is still beaten to a pulp. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. His face is a bloody mangled mess. Uh, yeah. 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 And uh but hey, it's the happy ending we all want, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this movie is out of here. I do love this about uh 80s and early 90s films. When the plot is over, so is the movie. Yeah, we're there done. is There we're is we're sh- out of here, man. There's, we have... <laughs> there's no denouement. What all. more do you need to know? Yeah, I thought maybe we would yeah. get like them you know having Six living somewhere later, nicer. Our yeah. Big, yeah. Big happy polycule living in this house. <laughs> <laughs> Joshua's living in the house. Yeah, you know? man. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, Everyone's just coexisting. No, it just the movies. The movie's over now, man. It's over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's done. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're done. Uh, so uh, uh, that's yeah, that's Lionheart. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty good. Go. Pretty good. Eight out of ten. Yeah. 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 Very solid. Uh, solid film. I think we only have the one death, so I guess the best kill of the movie is the guy being lit on fire, which is pretty good. Yeah. His I brother. mean, hey, yeah. if you're gonna have if you're gonna have one death, might as well be <laughs> that one. Might as well be a guy getting lit on fire. I mean, yeah. we, we love it here uh-huh. on the show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. let's quickly run through these one liners though and choose our favorite one liner. Of course, mm. said best kill of the movie starts with uh This is sugar and this is gasoline. <laughs> Pretty good right at the gate. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, when the guy on the boat uh, is is trying to screw over Van Dam and keep him on the boat, uh, he says, uh, "What's it going to be?" And Van Dam says, "It's going to be simple." And then punches him. Pretty yeah, good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, then we have, of course, the classic. I don't know if I want to fight you or fuck you. Less mm. of a one liner. Oh, so good. Less it's of a one liner and more of a man. <laughs> A man desperately reaching out for somebody to yes. recognize him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he might as well have just said, please see me. Um, see me. Uh, of course, the thing about, I hear that, that he's going to turn you into pulp and that anything is possible. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, of course, yeah, at the end, when it's like, Cynthia bet against you. Wrong bet. Mm. Man, I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, you skipped out uh, by the little girl a bike. Uh, oh, there was that. Yeah, I did. That was that was. I was on the not, fence. I know. Yeah, I was on the fence. It, but it's delivered like one. It is like it is. It do, certainly is. Do yeah. something he'd appreciate. What's that? Buy that little girl a bike. <laughs> well, it's the same thing with I. I wrote down the you have a big heart, lion heart, which I'm like, great. Not really a one liner, but I did. It, yeah. it needs to yeah, be. Yeah, they did say the title of the movie. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought it was uh, not great that they looked at the camera then when he said it. I was like, yeah. Oh, dare I yeah. He gave it a huge yeah. thumbs up. Yeah. That's weird. You heard, that's mm-hmm. right. The title of the movie came up. Uh, hey, <laughs> that's the name of the movie. It's like Looney Tunes letters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a weird choice. But, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. <sighs> For me, it's between. I'm not sure if I want to fight you or fuck you and wrong wrong bet yeah that's that's kind yeah, of where i'm yeah. leaning I, because the thing about it, it is i think it is that i don't want to fight i don't know if i want to fight you or fuck you because it is <laughs> it is what i'm going to remember from this movie right it is the thing yes. yep. that yes. stands yes. out as like no context needed we often we, we've just... talked about what is the criteria for one line in the movie and i think we have settled on it is the weirdest one right like we like the strange <laughs> ones we like yes. either either ones that are where it's all about the delivery, because uh, we're still mm-hmm. obsessed with uh, the aforementioned Burt Reynolds with uh, "Sweet Dreams, Asshole," uh, yeah. Yeah. which is not <laughs> a particular. Michael Jai White uh, is still the front runner for this year with the "You didn't wash yeah. your hands." That's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. It's, these aren't particularly good one lines. It's just those actors sell those lines. 
Um, yeah. So yeah, I think we're gonna go with. Uh, uh, I don't know if I want to fight you or fuck you, but this movie pretty yes. solid. Uh, not a ton, but all pretty good one-liners, mm-hmm. um, which is not very often the case. few of them you want to groan. You know, uh, that's usually it's most of them are just out well, or sometimes shit. yeah, a lot don't make sense. Don't make sense, or, or are fun. so clearly reverse engineered where somebody has to say something that you're like, why would yeah. they say that only to set up that the guy right. said that um yes so uh there okay that's that uh so i do as as always now i try to i i i comb through the imdb reviews to find the most misguided opinion of a movie (laughs) and i will say this is the most unhinged shit (laughs) well this is this is a very strange one um because most of the time it's people liking movies that are terrible but we really enjoyed this movie uh so i had to uh uh I, i had to find somebody who who didn't like this movie um uh, and i'm now realizing that these are the reviews for the quest uh, <laughs> uh i forgot i clicked on that um because i did pull one uh earlier uh sometimes i enjoy people's stories of of the context that they saw the movie in, and i think that's key to this one um okay uh here it is this comes to us from imdb user tm john 22 uh, and uh, it is titled Worst Movie I've Ever Been Forced to Watch. I was stuck watching this poor excuse of a movie on a charter bus returning from Las Vegas. I couldn't escape it, but it was on the PA system, so I was forced to listen to the bad dialogue and poor sound effects. Two screens were in front of me, so if I wanted to escape, I had to look at the floor. I really wanted to use some of Van Damme's moves on the person who slipped this tape in the VCR. All of you voted 10 for it. Please get counseling. One out of 10 stars. Oh my God. You go to Vegas. You lose so much money. And then you're forced to watch uh, Lionheart on the charter bus back. Worst weekend ever. I just love the idea of this guy sitting there fuming for the two hours. God damn it. Son of a bitch. I lost everything. And I then had. I turned my head. And now I have to work. And then I turned my head. It's on that screen too. No! <laughs> I can't. I'm just going to ah, look at the floor for ah, 108 ah, minutes. And that's for God. And I've snorted all of my coke already. <laughs> damn it. Yeah, the mob, the mob said I'm not welcome back. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, unfortunately, the, the sequel to this movie never materialized. Uh, as as we've uh, as we've talked about, uh, so let's say we uh, we use our magic powers to make said movie materialize, and I do feel like we know at least one scene that will be in it based on what we just discussed. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So we're gonna fire up our handy dandy action movie title generator uh, to give us the subtitle of this movie will be Lionheart colon. Here we go. It's gonna it's thinking and it's randomizing now. Uh, it, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Uh, Lionheart, Officers of Twilight. So they go Uh-oh. to Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure, yeah, they go to Scotland. Well, yeah, yeah. The, the thing about it is, uh, oh, let's see, maybe, oh, okay, well, I mean, the classic thing is, right, the family is kidnapped, right, by yes. that guy mm-hmm. who's still mad, and he's like, if you want him back, you gotta come to Glasgow. Mm-hmm. And it turns out that Russell was behind the whole thing. Yes, we finally give Brian Thompson the villain role he deserves, yes. right? It's yes. just like, actually, man, yes. this isn't, I only am using that guy's anger to set up a now Scottish mm-hmm. uh, fighting tournament. Um, so he was secretly using uh, yeah Cynthia was face in the first. yeah she was just Cynthia the face was, no there. I think it's I think it's a vengeance thing like the vengeance plot in the second one is Russell going after Van Damme Ooh. like oh. Cynthia's dead <laughs> Cynthia got okay. murked by the English <laughs> yes and so that's yes. why he yes. teams up with the Scottish there you go. that's oh, it okay. yeah okay yeah. so he's he's avenging Cynthia's death yes death, and blames Van Damme for mm-hmm. it. okay yes okay she was the sense. only woman I loved and I never got the chance to tell her yeah <laughs> yeah yeah hey man I don't think that would have been good for you anyway um I don't <laughs> care <laughs> And so yeah, he's got to go. I'm to, very lonely. He's got to go to Scotland now, as always, because that's the rule this season. Who does Eric Roberts play in this movie? Mm, mm, great question. Now, uh, well, Eric so Roberts. the officer part, maybe he's like 
I don't know Scott. Like I know Scotland Yard is an English thing, so it wouldn't be that. But like the English Yard, then. <laughs> yeah, the English Yard, which is Scotland's mm. police force. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, he is part of that. And pretty, yes, pretty sure he right. he has assured us he can do a very convincing accent. He is mm-hmm. he's yes. really sold on that. Yeah, he is the he guy. Started who, working on it the night before. He's the guy who's <laughs> been. He's the guy who's been tracking. Wait a minute, something's going on. I've been hearing whispers about this underground mm-hmm. fighting tournament. Oh, maybe that's the thing. Then not only is it about Van Damme's getting his family back, but also uh, the government is willing to to like let Van Damme yes. do this to infiltrate and bring it down. Yes. yes. Definitely. <laughs> so Definitely. it's 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 both personal and for justice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and man. all the fights happen at night, which is where the twilight part comes in. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, right. <laughs> Completely forgot we had the time. Sure, yeah, there, there you go. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the, the officers. Uh, Colons of... make an appearance. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of jorts in the film. I'm There's gonna... a lot yeah. of jorts. Yeah, so many jorts. Yeah. Anyway, that's uh, that's Lionheart. They play baseball. Lionheart. Yeah, yeah there's a weird. <laughs> I love baseball. Uh, it is turning to Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Uh, also, maybe Christopher Lambert in Mortal Kombat, who also has that. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's uh, that's Lionheart, colon, Officers of Twilight. Look for it in a red box near you. Uh, well, Lisman, uh, June Claude Van Damme rolls along next week. Uh, we're going to yeah. we're going to change gears for something a little bit different. This was a. Uh, 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 Van Damme wanted to try a new mode, so something a little bit more romantic. Oh, yeah! Uh, okay. And it's a little film from 1993 called Nowhere to Run. Nowhere uh, to run. As but always, it's still an action movie. He's it, still kicking people. He is still kicking people, but also falling in love. Um, Nowhere is, to Run is not really. A it's a very weird romantic title, title to have for a a romance yeah. movie. Uh, here, yeah. here is the here is the tagline. Okay. Sam Gillen lives outside the law, caught between a past he can't outrun and a fight he can't walk away from. Van Damme, maybe, Nowhere to Run. Maybe that movie should be called Lionheart and this one should be called Nowhere to Run. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to have another one of our favorite guests uh, join us. Elizabeth Alley will be with us to talk about Nowhere to Run, uh, a movie that does feature... Little baby Kieran Culkin. Oh, so many babies! <laughs> we get we get a lot we get a lot of adorable kids in these movies. So yeah, we're gonna get uh-huh. we're gonna get little Kieran Culkin playing a character named Mookie. <laughs> oh, I've never oh, seen this movie. Know. I don't know what the context of any of this is. Uh, this is, is I, it the I, prequel I, to Succession. <laughs> I can only imagine <laughs> he's gonna say all kinds of horribly uh, sexist things in it. I'm sure. Uh, uh-huh. But uh, yeah, so get ready for nowhere to run. A, like I said, a little bit different, still action, but you know, a softer Van Dam. Well, as if he's pretty, he's okay. pretty soft in this movie too. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it is. Uh, uh, this is more nice guy Van Dam next week. So uh, Elliot, thank you for for joining us. Uh, of and of course, you can hear Elliot and Lisman every week uh, here on the Punch of Entertainment Network over on uh, one of our other shows, Material Components. Yes, yes. We play on that. <laughs> Thank yes. you for confirming that. Yes, we play games on <laughs> we, that. We play, play games. We, we play games. Uh, we roll we, dice. We roll dice, and I I don't think any of us are as both pretty and uh, deadly as Jean Claude Van Damme, unfortunately. No. <laughs> Unfortunately, but, but, but really, we're, we're a good runner-up in both categories. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's 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 real yeah. close though. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. who is that's a tough bar you know to clear yeah. <laughs> it's true <laughs> uh but yeah that is going to do it for this week's episode of the action shelf i'm john campbell i'm michael Lisman. till next week get yourself some action the action shelf the action shelf